Just waiting for everyone to pop into roll 20, and then we'll get started. We'll start without her. Question. Yeah. Who's got the noose? She does. Raven. Interesting. I don't have any plans with it, but... Yep, Raven is the one who has the noose equipped currently. Hmm. Is that better? Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. All right. So if I had telekinesis, would I be able to use that with the noose just to throw a man-sized... <laughs> a magical item weighing as much as a man at people? I mean, I don't see why not, technically. And Catapult. would I be able to kill people like that? Kill? Maybe. Um, hurt? Definitely. Would I be able to finagle it so the noose goes around their neck and I raise them up and hang them with it? No, only because once they're wearing it, it reduces the weight of it. Okay, yeah, but then I'd be lifting the noose and the noose. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with a hard no on that one, buddy. Dang. <laughs> Although I have points for creativity. Just use catapult. Catapult is good, too. I do have that. I think catapult does, like, how much damage? Like, 3d8 or something if it hits? I believe it's 3d8, yeah. It's weird that I know that, and I've never used the spell. Catapult is so underrated, I feel. Like, no one ever uses it. Yeah, it's, it's very what level good. is it? Second or first? First. Yeah. But you can use it at second level. Yeah, I think that there are just so many like more standout options that no one really pays attention to the spells that really are just fun to use. <laughs> like personally, my favorite level one spell is Chaos Bolt. Hmm. Interesting. Because it does it, it does. 2d8 plus 1d6 damage, and that damage is determined by the d8s that you roll. Yeah. Witch Bolt is level 1 as well, isn't it? Yeah, Witch Bolt is, but the only thing I don't like about yeah. Witch Bolt is it requires an action every turn to do damage. That is but it true. is consistent damage, so it's... Eh. So that... The that, one thing that does... I think it's pretty cool. The one thing that does kind of irk me about um, Witch Bolt is it's kind of unclear on the wording uh, if, uh, since it's a, it's a concentration spell, but if the spell misses on the first shot, it isn't really clarified if you can try again on the second turn as long as you're still maintaining concentration. I'd assume so, but you know what they that's, say about assuming. That's how I like to interpret it, because it doesn't feel like a waste of a spell. Mm-hmm. All right, so who would like to recap what happened last time in Waterdeep? You know. Uh, Sketch is a changeling. <laughs> Everyone now knows. That is the that is the bit that is the big thing, and now Sketch is planning uh, on keeping you all quiet. Uh, they have no mouth. Yeah, well, Sketch is going to be quiet. Doesn't mean that <laughs> that means that you guys have to now. Sketch has no mouth, but. Must scream. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so, we're t picking up where we left off. You have en entered a mausoleum in search of Millie. Um, fighting a shadow and a specter right off the bat. And causing Sketch to kind of lose control and freak out. And become... Uh, using one of his abilities to, or one of her abilities to show her true form to frighten the, the specter, or shadow, I forget which one. Um, causing, it was the shadow. Causing the shadow the rest is of you, the deadly one. <laughs> causing the rest of you to realize that, hey. She became a uh, death metal singer. Yeah, she's not exactly a tiefling. And that is where we pick up. So, uh, we rested earlier, didn't we? Yes, everyone had a long rest prior to going into here. And then we took a short rest after Sketch almost died. And yes, we had a short rest. Yep. Alright. So, I guess we can only keep 
chucking along. Chuck, chuck, chucking. Okay, so Skit, uh, I suppose we'll try to peek around the corner. Do we see anything in there? Um, is there a way for me to see what whose vision is what? Well, the only one that actually has dark vision is uh, Balthazar, while two of us have um, torches now. Well, the panther should have dark vision as well. It doesn't. It doesn't? Nope. Really? That annoyed me. But one of my previous characters uh, was actually heavily based on, like, you know, a shifter that had... Um, well, I'll be know, damned. Was re it was raised by panthers, and I B-shaped into panthers, and they don't have dark vision, which confuses me. That's really odd. Because cats have dark vi Cats can see in the dark. Especially yeah. panthers. Actually, if I... I wonder, do wolves have dark vision? Uh, most... I... Yes. Because they are like dogs, and they can see in the dark. Not as well as cats can, but... No, I'm talking oh, in-game. In game, aren't you? Yeah, in-game. In uh, okay, they don't have dark vision. Good, because I was going to be annoyed if, if wolves have dark vision, but big cats don't. Right. <laughs> Alrighty. I think you had mentioned before the end of the last session too that we could like hear some people down this hallway or something. Yes. Yeah, can we can hear some people. We as... can hear people, but we don't know where the voices are coming from. Correct. They're just coming from the rooms on there. It's very uh, faint. The the voices. Okay. Uh... Alright. Well, I will uh, stealth ahead a little bit. See what I can send. Okay, make a stealth check for me. Okay. Um, Balthazar, how far out does your dark vision go? It goes. Check here. Regular elf, sixty feet. Yeah. All right. So you see a from where you are a pile of bones in the corner here. Okay. Well, I think that's to be expected within a mausoleum. Of course, it's skeletons. <laughs> Let's not jump to conclusions. If if the DM <laughs> says that there are skeletons in the corner of a room, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. She was gonna go ahead and. Assume it's skeletons and throw a firebolt at it. Are you able to see it? No. Okay, so make an attack at disadvantage. Neato. You're definitely going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Did I bring up my monsters real quick? That is... Two. Wow. Wow. All right, so as you fling your firebolt into the corner there, um, oh, I got to silence that. I apologize, guys. Sorry, my son's mom was texting me. Hmm. Trying to find coverage for him this week because he's on vacation. Um, uh, the the body rises. And I need everyone to roll initiative because, yeah, Sketch is right. <laughs> if the DM well, says there are skeletons in the corner, it's skeletons. Hey, you never know. know. It could have been just a pile of bones. Never. One of these uh, days. Can you remove that torch? Which one? On the initiative tracker. Oh, yeah, I guess I could. <sighs> Do -do -do. First one was better. <laughs> Do you want me to use the first one? Because it was just the icon that. Yeah, was you wrong. can use the first one. It's fine. Okay. I won't do that to you. Nope. 14.18. All right. So, first up are the skeletons. Um, the first thing they see is this panther. So, this one's going to move here. Do skeletons have dark vision? Mm, 
You know what? That's a fair point, actually. <laughs> no, they don't. This one, however, did see the firebolt come flying at it. So he'll move five. What? Skeletons just don't have dark vision? No. Just um, skeletons. They don't have eyes. Exactly. Yeah. They move up here and got a point there. sense the uh, panther and make an attack on the panther. With a short sword attack. And uh, if, an eight, and that's going to miss. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering if since uh, the skeletons are in darkness, would they have disadvantage on their attacks, but it missed anyway? Yeah. Um. Yes, they would. Oh, I have it on Whisper. Of course I do. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just going to spend the day going through all of the monsters and make them all for a show. Never Whisper You would roles. think they would make that like a... An option that would be that would be awesome. Um, this one's going to kind of just move forward a little bit, sensing some blood. Um, they're not going to make any attacks, and that will bring us to Sketch. Okay, uh, Sketch will uh, move around the corner first. And actually, they would be able to see you guys because of the torches you guys have. Okay. Now I'm thinking about it, but not a big deal. Um. Okay. So moving here, I can see that there's a skeleton around the corner. <laughs> yep. Since I am around the corner, if I were to move away from it, I would still get the attack of opportunity? Correct. Okay, just wanted to know what would happen, because corners can sometimes be a little bit odd. Yeah, you'd get a plus two bonus to your AC, that's how I run corners usually. Um, but yeah, they would still get the attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, at, if I used... And if I use... And uh, with... Uh, ranged attacks while in melee combat. Disadvantage. Do ranged attacks get all of them, or just the ones that are against the target that I'm like trying all to All of them would. All of them, okay. So because the way I understand it, it would be all of them, yes. Got it. Just wanted to make sure that... Unless uh, you have crossbow expert, I want to say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case... Uh, I'm going to move up. You know what? I'm just going to move even closer there. Um, no advantage at this point. Uh, but given things are still moving, I'm just, go uh, I'm just going to use my action to attack. Okay. Just straight up attack. I'm not going to uh, insightful fight yet. A 12. Mm -mm -mm. I do believe. No, that just misses. Just misses. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to use my bonus action to, uh, with uh, cunning action, I can dash, disengage, or hide. Mm -hmm. Also, I can't take the dodge action as a bonus action. That's monks. Monks can do that. Well, they would have to spend a key point, yes. Yeah, but I don't have access to the dodge action with cunning action. Yes. So in that case, I'm... Well, rogues don't get it at all. So in that case, I'm going to... Uh, I moved 5, 10... I'm going to move into this square here. So that's... 15, and then disengage from both of them. Mm -hmm. 15, 25, 30. Okay. And then I end my turn. And hopefully you guys can see all of the skeletons here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sheev, it is your turn. Um, can I see if the skeletons are wearing any metal armor? Uh, looking at them, it does not look like they're wearing metal armor. Uh, they just have, like, scraps of armor hanging off their bones. Um, however, they do have short swords in their hand. All right. Um, well, then I'm going to move here, and I'm going to cast Firebolt again, I guess. <laughs> okay. Same one? Yep. All right. Uh, ten misses, unfortunately. That's unfortunate. Well, that's it. <laughs> All right, all right. Raven is up. Uh, let's see here. She will. Yeah, she'll cast Firebolt as well. Oh, and she's definitely gonna hit. 
for seven points of fire damage. Yeah, so she shoots this one here, um, and it's looking pretty rough. Uh, that will be it for her. So, Keleth, you're up. Don't trust when the DM says that with undead. Well, luckily with skeletons, they're easier. <laughs> yeah, well, zombies can't die. As long as, as, long as they keep rolling well. <laughs> Dang. Ooh, uh, this one here? Yep. Yeah, it, it's dead. Crumbles to the ground in a pile of bones. I think you're muted, Kaleth. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, that's it for me. That's all I can do this turn. All right. Uh, Balthasar, you're up. All right. I'll go ahead and get to this guy right here. Mm hmm. And try to mace him. Oh, yeah, that hits. Apparently you were a fighter. Oops, that was it. Seven. Yeah, you just miss. You just destroy the skeleton as your mace just slams into the side and it cracks all the ribs and it just slams into the wall, scattering on the floor. Right. Bludgeoning damage, Joe. Really, I still have some movement, so I'll go ahead and try to interpose myself with this guy. Okay. That's it. All right, next up are the skeletons. Uh, this one here will attack you, Balthazar. All right. Since you are right there for him. Uh, that will be a seven to hit. Nope. And this one's going to rush up and attack uh, Kaleth. For an 18 to hit. That'll hit. And seven points of piercing damage. That actually rolled really well. Uh, sketch your turn. Okay. Uh, first of all, move up to behind the skeleton, and flanking doesn't give advantage, but plus two. So in that case, I'm going to insightful fight. Okay. It has to beat sixteen, so a deception check from it. Oh, excuse me. Um. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Ooh, undead. Very low charisma. Yes. And now I Mr. attack Vampire. with. Now I attack with a short sword. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, that. Oh, it was a nineteen. Yeah. I was confused because that was ridiculously high, and it. I thought I saw a twenty, but no. Um. Oh, you actually added in the plus two thing. Yeah, because it has nineteen plus four, which is the proficiency. Oh, no. No, that's... four is your dex and two is your proficiency. Yeah, four is the dex, two is the proficiency. I thought yeah. that the plus So it would really be a 27. Yep. You you guys, could, if if I felt like it or if I decided to, I could make it so you have ones with flanking bonuses, but... Yeah, that. but honestly, it's just easy to add the plus two. So in that case, yeah, damage. So... Uh, six and seven. Yeah, that's enough to destroy it. Uh, John or um, Balthasar, you have to duck as some of the bones come flying as uh, Sketch just starts slicing at the skeleton. I like uh, come up and see that it has like two, uh, like two of uh, its vertebrae are like look kind of rattly. So I just put my sword between those two ribs <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and like sever the spine completely. All right. Anything else, Sketch? Uh, that was my bonus action, a bit of movement. I think all that I'll really do is, like, I guess I'll maybe move up a bit closer. Like, I'll try and, I don't know, use this crumbling skeleton as, quote, cover without really doing anything. <laughs> okay. Sheev, you're up. One skeleton left. <laughs> well, Sheev saw it uh, stab the uh, pretty kitty, so he's going to... Magic missile it. Ooh. Ooh. Um, it's still standing, but it it's hurting after that. Why do you keep rolling so low on magic missile? Man, I lo I roll low on everything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Get some new dice, Chief. Come on, man. 
Oh, it's sorry. A... Let me just program a new set that only rolls twenties. <laughs> uh, anything else? Nah. All right. Raven will once again firebolt. Because why not? And Eleven's and gonna miss though. And because you don't want to feel bad about using her spell source while she's not here. Yeah, something like that. But she wouldn't use them on skeletons either. I don't believe. Yeah. Keleth, your turn. All right, going for another bite. Actually, she will have moved in a little bit more. Uh, 12, I think, misses. Yeah. All right, that's it for me. Balthasar. Don't worry, you guys will be five soon enough to get the second attacks. <laughs> I'll go ahead and move here. Uh... If you scooch one more over, you would be flanking for the plus two bonus, just so you know. Here? Uh, up one. Up one. Here. Yep. All right. Mm. And... Nice. Uh, kill. Yeah, it's it's dead. It has four hit points left. Poor thing. Because that does six damage. Because they are vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. A pile of bones. Uh, and with that, you guys are out of combat. Man, why couldn't we fight these things at the entrance? <laughs> My dear. Unfortunately, the enemies aren't always easy. Sheev uses Mage I... Hand to pick up some bones. Um, I... I I would just like to point out I managed to sever that thing's spine real easily, and Balthazar here just smashed that one's face in with a with a light tap. <laughs> yeah, they were already brittle. Who knows how long they've been here? Restless souls. Uh, Sketch will move up to this corner here and try and listen around the corner, see if we hear anything. Okay, make a perception check for me. Perception. Total of 20. Uh, listening in particularly to that room, you don't hear anything. However, you start to hear chanting coming from uh, this direction over here. That direction, okay. I'm just going to have a quick look into this room, see if there's anything that I can see. Okay. Uh, looking around, there is one sarcophagus in here uh, with two lit braziers on the end, either end of it. Hmm. Lazy DM is lazy. <laughs> we'll think. We'll think of that. We'll come back to that later. Um. Okay. Uh, she's gonna go ahead and light up a torch as well. Okay. How does that work? You changed your icon to a <laughs> Yeah, you did. Um, In wow. Interesting. You just, yeah, you just drag the torch over to ah. the ground, like you would your character sheet. Okay. He's gonna... He's just gonna throw the torch down there. No. Okay. I'm gonna go down here. I wanna check this room. Can okay. I see anything? Um, nothing that you can see. You just see... Um, yeah, you see an empty room before you. I'm going to go a bit further. Just assume wherever my torch goes. I yeah. Uh, if you if you, can... if you click and drag, you can select both of them. Like you're playing an RTS. Hmm. And also, you can move them both at the same time. Have anything on them? Nice. Uh, so they're... Go ahead, Chief. Sorry. Oh, so there's nothing in this room here? Uh, nope, just another two sarcophaguses, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, and I then both. And then an empty open one here uh, that looks like it has not been used yet. Um, opening both of them, there are uh, two skeletal remains in both of those. Oh, cool. Uh, the skeletons, you just there are just some leather scraps on their bodies for like the armor, and they each have uh, a rusty short sword. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, that was for Balthazar. Uh, in that sarcophagus, there's right. there's a couple like gold coins lying around in there, but nothing of importance besides that. Oh, neat. I get money. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You have four gold coins and three silver coins. Oh, cool. And then... That's it? That's never it. (laughs) That's it. I promise. And then she lays in the sarcophagus. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's fair. Oh, wait, wait. There was an unused sarcophagus there. <laughs> I go trigger the lever again. Take a short rest. In the sarcophagus. <laughs> Sting um, does nothing. He leaves. Okay. Uh, at this point... um. Hearing the chanting, mm-hmm. Sketch will Yeah. Sketch will shape change and look like um one of the bodies of the and look like one of the uh Xanathar people that we found in uh the warehouse. Okay. Um it's with a... the same tattoo position and all that. Okay. It's an odd sensation actually watching Sketch's form just shift and alter. Uh, first going back to his, or her white um, shape changeling self and then switching to this humanoid figure with a tattoo that's similar to one of the ones you fought previously. It's a little unsettling watching this happen. But it's like a train wreck. You can't, you don't want to stare, but you can't look away. My dear, that is far less conspicuous, but I prefer the uh, tiefling look. Well, it may be less conspicuous, but honestly, it does mean that if the Xanathar people are here, then we're likely to, uh, then they're likely to think that I'm one of them. And they're more likely to die. So, if we don't think that, if you guys don't mind, I think that I can pro- I could probably move forward on my own. Uh, I'll send you a signal if uh, it's safe to come in. What will that signal be, exactly? Yeah. Uh, you hear someone get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on in. Okay. Uh, as you move in... Just to um, the bottom of the steps at this yep. point. As you move down there, you see kind of a flickering form in front of you as another specter materializes now that you're close enough to be able to see it with your torchlight. And I need everyone to uh, initiative. Oh, go ahead. I'll allow it. No, I'm just, I was just going to say, this is an immediate nope, and I'm ready to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everyone roll initiative for me. Hey, finally a good roll. You hear something get stabbed. What? I step down. Never mind, don't stab, just kill. <laughs> <laughs> can you even stab a ghost? You can try. You can certainly try. Uh, one, Probably two, with a magic three, That's four, five. Thinking. All right, uh, Sheev, you are first. Uh, wow. You are able to see it due to the torchlight from Sketch. Neato. Uh, I'm just gonna shocking bolt it. Okay. Uh, 16 definitely hits. Hey. Uh, as the lightning kind of goes into the body of this creature, it doesn't look like it does a full damage to it. Damn. Uh, anything else? Nah. All right, Kaleth, you're up. All right, I'm running up and making a clot. Okay. Uh, are your attacks considered magical yet? Uh, I, I know at some point they are. I just so. don't know when. I think that's a moon circle creature, actually. I'll look it up. You guys can focus on the combat thing. 
Uh, 18 definitely hits for six points of damage. Uh, once again, you, you rake it and your claws kind of go through it. Um, you've dealt damage to it, but not as effective as you were hoping. That's it for me. Okay. Next up is the Spectre. It's going to try and life drain you uh, for an 11 to hit. That was to the Panther? That'll miss. Yes. That'll miss? Okay. Uh, as it goes to swipe at you, you kind of dodge out of the way, um, avoiding its very potent attack. Uh, and that's going to bring us to Sketch. Um, I will keep my distance uh i will just move to the top of the stairs and i will take a shot at it with an arrow but, okay. oh wait sorry first of all i'll insightful fight okay because this feature is broken it has to be the 25 which it doesn't get <laughs> yeah that's i love this feature it's really cool that's your changeling thing right no that's uh all inquisitives all inquisitive rogues get this feature wow uh, 18 definitely hits, by the way. Yep. Uh, short bow. Uh, with sneak attack. Yep. Ooh. Ah, uh, I mean, that was the sneak attack damage was the 5, yeah. so that's a total of 15. Yep. I um, think it might be dead. The arrow doesn't do as much damage as you were hoping. The sneak attack damage does go through to the full amount, but the piercing from the arrow ah. kind of just goes through its body. It's looking pretty bad. It's, start, it's trying having a hard time holding its form together. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know that, uh... Sneak attack damage went through. I don't know if it does or not, but I'm allowing it. Because yeah. <laughs> it's so. not like any particular... It's not like... A damage type. Sneak attack damage isn't like piercing damage. It's considered its own separate thing. Okay. Yeah, but it's all good. Alrighty. Um, Raven is up. She will firebolt because it's an old bit of goody. And for the uh, question about the magical druid shape... Um, Thing. Yes, it's a sixth yeah. level circle of the moon feature. And with that, her firebolt enters the body of the specter and it just explodes in a blast of uh, ectoplasmic, uh, kind of like Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters, just all over the place. <laughs> Keleth is just covered. It's wretched. I run over to the rest of the group and shake it off. I was <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh. invitation to help him out. All right. <laughs> After a moment, you're all nice and clean. Uh, the chanting is getting louder. Hmm. Okay. She Sketch will. the pretty kitty. Sketch will keep going. Uh, listen around this corner first, or like just listen in general. Like, which direction is it coming from? Can we tell at this point? Um. It's kind of echoing from both sides. Hmm. Do we want to go north or south? Um, is there any indication on the ground, like uh, footprints or anything? Uh, there's dusty drag marks. There's dust. There, the drag marks lead to the south, but there are footprints leading both ways down into this next area. Um. You kind of get the impression that they, it might combine at the back end of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we should go south just because that's most definitely where, where we want to go. I agree. I agree. Uh, I believe that we should go ahead and take the precaution of all but one of us putting our torches out. I'll I'll go on ahead. Uh, if they are Xanathar... If they are Xanathar people, then they, at least initially, won't have any issue with me. But be ready to uh, dash on in. And so Sketch will head on. Sketch will uh, move on forward. Okay. To here at least, and just let everyone wait on top of the stairs. I can see that, so. Yeah, yep. I didn't. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to like, drag it off the screen <laughs> like that would help. It's all good. Um, you don't see anything. So let everyone. The chanting gets louder. I'll, yeah, I'll let everyone get to the stairs first before I move on in, just so everyone has like a good opportunity to dash in. Can she go ahead and stealth 
stealth too. Yeah, you can certainly try. Uh, roll a stealth check for me. Whew. All right, give me one second, folks. Is that water I see? Ooh, making all the enemies visible. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you you see these people in strange garb chanting over this over Millie's form laying on the top of this pool, um, almost like something is keeping her in stasis above the water. Um, they're chanting. They're, they don't even realize that you're there. Um, and as you hear the chanting, you see this ethereal form uh, appear next to Millie and look at her and reach for Millie. Let me just get a let me just look at my sneak attack thing again, because I want to check something. Uh once per turn I can deal extra one I can deal an extra two d6 at this point to one creature I attack if I advantage. Um I don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy is within five feet of it and that enemy isn't incapacitated. Or I don't have disadvantage. Okay, so you don't get like so I don't think it's assassin that gets like the surprise sneak attack, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, surprise round sneak attack isn't a thing unless I were to insightful fight it. Um, the other creature does not know you're there, so you would have advantage on the attack roll. Oh, okay. Um, can I? <laughs> this probably isn't going to work, but can I possibly? Um. Uh, thinking of any, like knowledge of shady underground cult dealings that I may have come across, um, would I possibly know if... Could I possibly like, try and sense if the chanting is keeping the spectral form here? Like, does the spec would the spectral form possibly... Does it seem to, like, grow in power as the chanting continues? Or Make a religion like check for me. Got it. It's a standard religion. I mean, it's still a minus one, but <laughs> a total of eleven. You're not entirely sure. Yeah. Um, Sound theory, but you're not sure. Yeah, given it's a, uh, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, um, quickly dash up and stab this cultist. Stab this cultist. Okay. Make an attack roll. Would I have advantage? Yep. Okay. He does not know you're there. Need... Yep, no need to worry. Uh, short sword, so die. Hey, okay, hey. roll damage. Uh, with sneak attack. Okay. Nice, a total um, of 19 piercing as you, damage. As you run up behind this creature uh, with his arms up and chanting, uh, you quick stab him in his side, hitting his vital organs, and you slice back his guts and innards spilling out on the floor. He falls over dead. Um, and as that happens, the other two cultures collapse to the ground as well, dead. Um, however, the creature stops, looks at you, and I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, hold on, let me get rid of the old turn order. Nice. Sorry. Damn it. You can use the 19.18 yeah. and the... Sheev, I'll let you reroll because I'm nice. Oh, you're already on the initiative order. Never mind. <laughs> oh, darn. All right. There we go. Raven. As long as this ghost doesn't... Uh... Oh, gee. Uh, oh, God. I just had a thought. What if it's a Banshee? <laughs> Oh god, no, no way at level three. I would not do. Well, I mean, I might do that to you guys, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, and let no me way we'd be able to beat a banshee at level three. Change her roles. No, she's just a regular old ghost. Oh well, I hope force damage does well against her. Uh, never whisper rolls. All right. Wow, Millie's actually got a character token now. Uh, may or may not be the commoner token, but you don't know. Yeah, it's a commoner token. <laughs> hey, hey. Don't worry. Right. One of these days I'll give her a real one for you. 
Uh, five, this, ten, also, 12. I love the first note that I have uh, in uh, today's session. It's always skeletons, and then, and then after that, except when it isn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I should be taking notes. Oops. Okay, she is I mean, going. Dungeon crawls aren't exactly full, but Raven Wait, but... is going to oh. cast Shatter, and such a point where it will not hit Millie, which she can well, easily she do. She has um. Yeah, she has the evocation. Oh, right. that's right. Uh, she'll cast it at second level. Also, just giving you guys a heads up, uh, it's starting to get pretty stormy here. So if I all of a sudden drop out, it could be because the power went out. Not acceptable. Mm. You tell that power to stay on. <laughs> all right, Ghost has to make a constitution save. Start riding a... Uh, that is a five. That is a fail. Ooh. Start riding a... In a bike to keep the power going. There we go. Hmm. I just need to get. I need to. T I need to tell the hamster to run faster. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the ghost kind of reels in pain from this uh, um, thunder damage that it takes. Uh, doesn't have the full effect. Um, and then her owl will fly over and use the help action. So the next attack on it will have advantage. Ooh. Nice. Uh, and that'll bring us to sketch. Um Okay, let me just think. Possible possible outcomes here. The ghost could possibly be trying to kill Millie. Uh in which case it's a good idea to try and get Millie out of there as soon as possible. But in order to do that, I would need to go over there and then get back, which is going to provoke an attack of opportunity on me and or Millie. Uh which is not good. So that means that I need to kill Tis time for stabbing. <laughs> uh, five, ten, fifteen. Uh, stab time. Okay. Um, you... the water is waist deep, so it is oh. double movement to go through the water. Uh, I would five. Does the would the water start in this square or would it start in the square after? Uh, it'll technically start in this square. Okay, so five. 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, I would still have enough. Okay. I think. Uh, so, if that's the case, time for stabbing. And I will... I said you could get onto the, like, the, pin, the end here and be on land and still hit it. Just so you know. Oh. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to move there. Yeah. Trying to get the uh, grids yeah. to line up is a pain in the butt. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, time for stabbing. Butt kicking for goodness! 18 to hit! <laughs> Good thing you have an advantage. <laughs> no, that's why. That's what. Yeah, I do have advantage. Uh, you would not be flanking because of Millie. She's unconscious. Um, but okay. you do. it's still an 18 that definitely hits. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, time to go for the eyes. For 16. <laughs> Thankfully, most of it was sneak attack damage. Yep. And minus two. Alrighty. And let me just think what... Uh, I can't take the dodge action. I can't take anything that would possibly... Um... Actually... Oh man, I'm still I'm still in human form, but I think I'm going to take the hide action, which I'm going to do by uh, first of all leaving the torch like where I am, where I am, mm -hmm. and I'm going since you said the water was waist deep. Yep, I'm going to uh, go prone into the water and hide under it for <laughs> a round, like try and okay. hide in the water. Interesting. <laughs> Make a stealth check. Interesting. Like hey. Creativity get, creativity gets rolls. Yes, it does. Indeed. Uh, so hide, so stealth. I don't have advantage. 21. Okay. Uh, you hold your if breath. If I still had my action, I would possibly try and make my skin blue or something, but I don't have my action. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you dive underwater, hold your breath, and you f f pray that the ghost cannot see you. Um, yeah. Although if it if it can see me, thanks to uh, 
I, I am, I would, I mean, the way that I'm, that I'm at least uh, wanting to do this is I'm laying prone there, so I think melee attacks get advantage. It would, however, it does not see you. Well, you know what, let's check just in case. No, it does not see you. Um, <laughs> so it's going to go to the nearest thing it can see, which is Raven. Um, and we have to do... Raven's going to have to make a Charisma saving throw. You see the ghost just disappear. Ah, shit. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's, um... Hmm. You see, um, yeah, Balthasar wouldn't see this, but Keleth and Chief, you both see the ghost kind of look at Raven and just kind of get absorbed into Raven's body. Keleth, you're up. Hmm. How do we get that thing out of her? Anybody have greater restoration? <laughs> and Sketch, you don't even know this happened. I mean, I'm still hiding under water. <laughs> yep. Although I did, like, see the thing move over me, at least, so. So. I don't like how it shares all the information when I link it for you guys. But it's all good. Ghost can't be targeted by any attack spell or other effect except ones that turn undead. Do any of us have potions? No. Um, I believe I said at the start that everyone would start off with one basic healing potion. Oh, oh. Cool. Um, I, I <laughs> thought I said it. I might not have. I don't remember. I I'm running four games, guys. <laughs> no, um, that's and um, to use a potion is an action, but it heals the full amount. Oh, neat. So you don't roll the dice, you just... You use whatever the potion it is, and it would be 10, yes. Because um, it's 2d4 plus 2 for a basic healing potion, isn't it? Right, so it would heal 10 hit points. Um, but like I said, it's an action to use. Cool. Um, when you go to use it to like shove it in somebody else's throat, that's when you would roll the dice. Because some uh, okay. might get spilled out while they're unconscious or things like that. So That is a neat house rule. Uh, so, Keleth, what would you like to do? Um, not really sure what to do, so I'm just going to, I think, try and uh, pounce, just try and pin her to the floor, just kind of okay. jump on her, try and knock her down. Does she have to make a save for that yet? Uh, it's not, it's not like a panther ability or anything. I just want to. Okay. Um. So her. we'll say you're going to try and uh, grapple her, essentially. So make a. Strength check, and she'll make a dexterity saving throw. So you make uh, athletics, she'll make acrobatics. Use your panther strength. Yeah, so you pounce on Raven and pin her to the ground. Uh, and you get a look into her eyes, and her eyes are clouded over, and they're not her usual eyes. Uh, so that was your action. Uh, I'm just going to hold her there and hope that somebody else can figure out how to get this out of her. Alright. Sheev, you're up. Sorry about this, my dear. Uh, I'm going to cast Magic Missile at second level. Oh. Let's see here. She Where does not have shield? Oh. Yeah. Alright, so 15 points of force damage. Should I select her? But does it gain access to the target's knowledge, class features, or proficiency? Spellcasting is considered a class feature, so I believe that she's just a, she's just no. a spellless wizard. Yeah. Fair. Alrighty. Nice. That might be the worst character for the ghost to take. Yeah. Yeah. Quite literally. I mean, we locked out. <laughs> the ghost doesn't know use... that, though. 
If she could use class features, I'm pretty sure me would be a worse option, given how <laughs> broken and insightful fighting can be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Balthasar, you're up. As you come around the corner, you see Keleth pinning Raven to the ground. As you see the remnants of four magic missiles go into Raven's body. So about this, I didn't see exactly what happened, right? Correct. You were around the corner when it all happened. Uh, so cleric, would I know like the symptoms of ghostly possessions? Like, I would say you could safely assume that she was possessed with Sheev and Keleth both turning on her, and you didn't see anything happen to Sheev. And he did say, sorry, my dear. You would have heard that. So I guess I'll go ahead and use uh, turn on dead. So he has to make a wisdom saving throw. That will be 13. 10. It fails. It fails and he has to flee. Yep. All right. Is it an immediate removal or does it have to do it on its turn? Let me check here. Because, like... I just wanted to be fair that. here, since I since I'm moving after Raven. <laughs> and so that isn't fair. Let's see here. Uh, uh, yes, a turn creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can. Yeah, the but due to the like... possession, it gets turn and it is immediately expelled. I'm going to say. Okay. Forced out yeah, by an effect like dispel loud. evil and good spell. Uh... The possession lasts until it's turned or forced out. Yeah, so it has been turned, so it yeah. is forced out of the body. It is forced out, but it will flee on its turn. All right, so yes. about this, I just uh, be holding his holy symbol like back creature. And I'll guess I'll get, just get closer so it gets farther away. Alrighty. Uh, Raven's up. Uh, she is stuck on the ground. Can't do anything. However, she will... Uh, she will magic missile. No, I'm sorry. She will Jim's magic missile. At second level. At the creature. Uh, one second, my wife's calling me. I can't believe diving under the water worked. <laughs> I can't believe I finally rolled well and it was against my own ally. I can't believe I managed to turn in on that. <laughs> well, that's a cleric's whole shtick, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. it still has a chance of failing. Uh, never mind, she's not going to magic missile because she had half to roll and she has disadvantage on the ground. I just read that. So she will just... Stab it with a dagger. Stab it in the ankle. Uh, <laughs> no, she's going to shatter it again. Because uh, she can't position it, so it's just the ghost that gets it. Uh, constitution saving throw. That is a fail. For 19 points of thunder damage. Damn, girl. Nice. Damn. Alrighty. Uh, the ghost is just having a hard time keeping its form now. It's still alive? It's still alive. It takes half damage from thunder. God. It takes half damage from pretty much everything. Uh, I'm dead. Getch, you are up. So I'm going to spend half of my movement to uh, get out of prone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to uh, see that everything is perfectly fine and no one got possessed and shoot the uh, ghost with an arrow. All right, you have an oh, advantage on this attack roll. Because the ghost did not know you were there. Oh, neat. Yeah, you're going no U.S. Navy Steels there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, short bow, wait, with advantage. Short bow. Yeah. And that is with sneak attack. Uh, nine points of sneak attack damage and five points of piercing damage. With that... The ghost turns to look at you as if it's going to rush at you, and it just 
to separate. Yeah, just pop up and just draw the bow. See that, like, uh, both the wizard and the panther are, like, on like on top of each other and, like, shoot the arrow, which goes through the ghost and goes between those two. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys are out of combat. I will be right back. I have to go get my dog. Well, guess it's time to save Millie. And I didn't use insightful fighting once. <laughs> Neat. All three of those attacks were with advantage. <laughs> wow. I have no idea. I am confused as to how those three cultists um just keeled over. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't question things that benefit me, all right? <laughs> don't look don't look a gift horse in the mouth, as my papa used to say. Um, there's a Those spell that does guns. that. But it doesn't it work. Horse in... in the mouth? Oh, wait. There's a, there's a spell that has a similar feature to that, but it doesn't work in three directions. Hmm. And I didn't do, like, that much damage. <laughs> like, I would exp I was... Uh... Honestly, like, thinking, okay, yeah, I can see that I got the, you know, that I got the one, you know, with 19 points of damage, I was like, okay, I can understand one of them being dead, but all three? I was expecting to have to fight three cult, or the other two and the ghost, so. Yeah. It's been a That's lot better than too. I thought it would. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought we were going to fight the cultists and the ghost was going to possess me before we got there. Hmm. Chief did a lot of damage, or yeah, Sketch did a lot of damage. But uh, anyways, um, so rogues an advantage. As com as the combat dissipates, you see Millie's body start to sink under the water. Sheev rushes over to come get her. I guess Sketch okay. will at least try and keep her above water. She wa she can't exactly like carry her, but she'll try to like at least keep her afloat. Okay. Um, you... I was like, she will pick her up. Yep, you pick her up, you lift her out of the water. Uh, she is not breathing. Do I know CPR? Make a medicine check. Balthazar? Wait, I'm still, I'm still in the, uh, I'm still in the Xanathar guild person form. Xanathar? No. Damn it, not Xanathar. Balthazar? <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I'll carry her over to land and try to start yep. CPR. You carry her over to land and you lay her down and you try to uh, use CPR to uh, resuscitate her and it doesn't work. I'm going to keep trying. Okay. Um, Balthazar, are you here? Can I use Shocking Bolt as like a defibrillator kind of thing? Uh, make another medicine check for me. <laughs> Good God. John, are you here? <laughs> I don't think he is. Oh, no. oh God. Shit. Um, <laughs> That's uh, not an that one. He disappeared. He disappeared. Here. Um, <laughs> as, as you're about oh. to shock her to, to um, resuscitate her, um, Balthazar comes over and stops you and says, we need to get her to a healer now. Aren't you a healer? Not <laughs> strong enough. Understood. I pick her back up and run out of the crypt. Okay. Um, Sketch is gonna... <laughs> um... Uh, as he's running out, Sketch is gonna... Um, I... Like, those cultists, are the masks actually a part of the cultists, or are they just, um, part of the token? Uh, they're just part of the token. Okay, um, I'm gonna investigate the, um, I'm gonna look at the body, see if I can find any tattoos. Okay, I'll make an investigation check for me. Investigation. Great! I have a minus one to that. 
<laughs> um, wait, just let me look at the eye for detail ability. Yeah, she. You, you take Millie. You just start yeah. rushing out. Not it's hard mic. to do when I can't see. Oh, Investigation. Yeah. That is sixteen. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> Millie's dead. Uh, Millie looks like she's dying. You guys defeated the ghost. Um, Millie is unresponsive. Um, she tried to do a medicine check to defibrillate her with a natural one or uh, two minus a one. I was like, uh, natural two. Your I character, think. realizing what was going on, stopped her in time and told him that she needed to get to a, a higher ranked um, medical professional than yourself. All right. A lot happened. Uh, do I find any tattoos? Um, looking around, uh, you do find one tattoo. Make a religion check for me. Oh, great. Um, oh, another 16. You, you've been, you're a very learned person. You've done a lot of reading and training. Uh, you know that this is a sim symbol of Asmodan. Asmodan. I'm assuming it's kind of demon or devil? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, or I'm sorry, not as an uh, Orcus, Orcus, Orcus. Orcus. Yes. I've heard that before. Yes. Um, Sketch is going to, first of all, morph into normal form. And, uh, well, tiefling form. Yeah. Uh, and will uh, leave the bodies as they were. And we'll start heading out. Uh, while going out with everyone, she'll uh, sketch will say, "I recommend you get rid of those markings I gave you. Don't want to don't want to have any guards that come across us assuming that we're a part of the Xanathar Guild." Sheev's just booking it out of the uh, mm -hmm. the tomb. Uh, Keleth, what's your so passive perception? My passive is uh, 16. 16? Okay. Um, as you are walking by this area up here, something's off about that wall. Hmm. Okay. Can I investigate further? Yeah. Um, roll an actual uh, investigation check for me. Hey, pooch. Uh... Looking at the wall, you realize that there's a small, very faint seam in it. And as you push it, uh, the, the wall kind of slides open, revealing an area on the other side. I will uh, call out to Sketch as she runs by. Uh, she sure, yeah. sure, she sure. can see that there. you have walked down this corridor. I just It's just more difficult. Yeah, the, uh, I'm going to go in. Okay. Uh, first, I'm just going to have a quick look around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a a small altar there with some various items around Is it. Is there anything around the corner? Uh, no creatures that you can see. But you oh. do see a small altar on the end here with okay. with various just... items on it. Okay. I'm going to... Um... Yeah, I'm going to walk up to the altar just... Grab as many of them as I can, mm -hmm. like without any, re without really like looking at them, and hand them over to, um, uh, hand them over to Keleth. Okay. Uh, and I say, you hold on to these. I'm gonna make sure she doesn't get himself killed, and I'm gonna uh, basically spend my entire, like my entire action, movement, and bonus action dashing to catch up with him. Okay. Um, Chief, as you leave the tomb or the mausoleum and you start rushing, there is a guard that sees you and flags you down and says, Halt! What are you doing in the graveyard at night? Oh, I'm, I was trying to catch up with him, right? So would I be with him? You are technically still with Keleth when this is going on because he was booking it out of here as you guys were getting ready to pass there. You mean Sheev? Yes. You yeah, are, no, yes, so sorry. I'm... You are, no, you are still with Keleth. You guys were... In that room as he leaves the tomb. Oh, okay. Because so you stayed around to look at the bodies real quick. 
as she was still booking it out of there. Okay, so he was also dashing and everything. Okay. Yes. He's getting, <laughs> so, he's getting Millie out of there. I, I spent, yeah, and then I, even though I spent my, um, yep, yeah, okay, with my, like, basically whole turn, 90 feet of movement. Right, but uh, you st- stopped to check for tattoos yeah, on the body. Yeah, I still had, first. like, yeah, I still, yeah. like, lost a couple turns thanks to that. Anyway, yep. Okay, so I will, um, I will stop where I am, like, I will comply and say, uh, no, we, no, Sheev is the one who is flagged down by the guard. Oh, Sheev is the one flagged down. My mistake. Yes. My love and I here, we, we thought it'd be exciting to be a bit risque. Uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden she passed out. I'm trying to get her to the nearest healer because I, I have no healing ability at all. I, where, I, where's the nearest church? I need to get her there now. I, I would, I don't know what I would do if she were to die. Um, make a, this is half and half. I'll say deception or persuasion, your choice. They're the same. That is, okay. That, so. is, that is 90% lie there. There's no question. <laughs> hey. All right. Um, he says, you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I should roll insight, but I'm not going to, because I don't think they can beat a 23. Um, says, hey, uh, do it. The hospice they want to get a natural 20. Yeah, I don't think they have plus three, though. Let's find out. Do it. Quit pressuring me. <laughs> pressuring the DM with all the swords. Yeah. Hold on, doggy. Jeez. Hey, I can sneak attack anything he throws at me. <laughs> this, this, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> why are veterans not listed? What the hell? Oh, there it is. I'm blind. Yeah, no. They don't have any pluses. So, yeah, she believes you. and says, uh, the hospice of St. Of Saint Lobson is the closest one here. Uh, just follow this path on NMR Street and you'll get there in no time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, she rushes off to the hospice of St. Lobson. Yeah. Um, as this inter- interchange is finishing up, uh, Sketch, that's when you see um, Shiva talking to the... You, you come out of the mausoleum and see them. Okay. Um, how much of the conversation did I hear? Uh, you heard Hospice of St. Lobson, and that was about it. Okay, so I, do, I didn't get, like, the whole last yeah. thing. Good. Nope. Well, well, well kind of good. Kind of a shame, because I, <laughs> I had a weird thought on how I could get out of this. <laughs> um, uh, but... Use this. Um, I will... Oh, excuse me. Uh, seeing the guard talking, uh, seeing him with the guard, uh, I will, first of all, uh, remove my, I will get rid of the lantern. Okay. Well, I'll put it out. Um, so I'll just, you know, just, eh. Um, and I will, you know what, I'm gonna hide. Okay, make a self gonna... check. I'm going to hide in the darkness and just try and sneakily follow along. You act like that's easy for you. (laughs) Sorry? I said you act like that's easy for you. (laughs) Roll stealth check. Yeah. Yeah. 19. 19, okay. Easy enough. You uh, stick to shadows and what little brushes and what and uh, um, small trees that there are and you watch as he starts to walk away and you just off into the street. Yep. Um, I'm quickly catching up with Sheev. Yeah. Um, I stick around, like, close enough to the... Um, I stick around close enough to the um, mausoleum so that I can at least watch the others leave or, like, make sure that the guard doesn't get too inquisitive. Okay. So I'll just stick around and wait for everyone else. Easy enough to do. So that they have, so that uh, in case things do go in a uh, combat direction, uh, we aren't relying on three spellcasters who have used a fair amount of their spells. Okay. Um, 
Uh, what are the two of you doing in the mausoleum? Balthazar and Kaleth. I would like to check out the... Was it like a shrine or something? Yes, there is a small altar um, in this room here. Yeah, I'd like to... S do I notice anything or is there anything um, peculiar about... There are no... Uh, there's nothing on it anymore as it's all been quickly picked up <laughs> and uh, in Kellis, uh bags. Um, make a religion check for me. Please. Bear, calm down, buddy. Can I also just take a quick look at all the stuff that uh, Sketch handed to me and see if any of it's worth keeping or if I should leave it here? Yeah, um, there's some the, there's some various gemstones, uh, some gold, some silver, some copper, uh, and three daggers. Two very similar in make and whatnot, and one that kind of stands out from the others. Okay. Um, I will keep it all in my backpack. Then. Balthazar, looking at this uh, um, altar, it seems to just be an altar to the god Palor. Uh, whom you would know to be the Don Father. All right. I guess once I check everything out here, I'll try to make my way out. Okay. Easy enough to do. It's O R C U S, right? Orcus. Yes. Yes. Don't piss off Orcus, because apparently he's challenge rating twenty six. <laughs> Yeah, don't do, mm -hmm. don't don't piss off, Orcus. Oh, thank you. Bear, stop. And he has no stats below. Oh no, he has one stat below twenty. <laughs> hey. Is that his charisma? No, it's his dexterity. Oh, his charisma yep, is yep. twenty-five. Okay. Uh, so you guys are heading. Term of those. <laughs> you guys are heading out. Yeah, Balthazar yeah. and I will head out together. Yep, with Raven as well. Um, is if the guard is nearby, then I'm going to attempt to uh, draw his attention away from the mausoleum. Um, the uh, but if but if he isn't around, then uh, it's all good. Yeah, the guard is is making his rounds, so he's actually not around this mausoleum at this point. As you guys exit, um, okay, you guys don't see Sketch or Sheev anywhere. Uh, when I see the when I see them all exit, I'll uh, come out of hiding and just try and quickly lead them uh, back into the sewer that we came in from. Okay, uh, easy enough to do. You guys make your way to the sewers and head underneath. Yep. So uh, when we're safe uh, and in the sewers, I'll say uh, she was taken merely to the hospital of Saint Lots, and we got to get there soon. We got to get there quick. Because as charismatic as that guy is, I'm, I can't be 100% certain that he'll be able to talk his way into this one. <laughs> into possibly getting a revival for free. Alright, so you guys make your way through the sewers. Um, Sheev, about this time, you, are, you arrive at the hospice. Um, the doors are always open. Uh, do I know anything about the god they serve? Um, I believe in. Make a religion check. Uh, you're not quite sure about this place. You haven't really had too much dealings over here. All right. Oh, uh, I'm I'm booking it in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you rush in, you do see um people in robes tending to. Some wounded, some sick, um, some people praying. I bring Millie up to a person with robes and say, please, you've got to help her. She, she, I believe she was touched by a ghost. She isn't breathing. I have very little medical knowledge. I, I cannot do anything about this. Please help her. Please. Uh, come, come, lay her on the bed. Um, and she brings you over to one of the beds and you lay Millie down. Um, and she starts to look over Millie. 
and says, Hmm. This is definitely very interesting. I haven't seen a case like this in quite some time. Um, one moment, please. And she leaves and heads up a flight of stairs towards the back of the hospital. A um, couple minutes roll by when she comes down with another member uh, who comes over, looks over Millie, and says, Hmm, she has a strange affliction upon her. Um... What exactly happened, young sir? I, I, she was kidnapped by a a group of what looked like cult members. Um, we rescued her. Uh, there was she was held atop a pool, and a ghost of some sort was reaching into her. Hmm. Well. That's probably what's going on here. Uh, it will take us a few days. We may be able to save her. We're not sure yet. Um, do you know where her family is? She, she's not from here. She's, she's a student at the uh, black. What was it? Black Staff Tower. Black yes. At, she's a student at the Black Staff Tower. That's all I know. All right. Well, we will send a message to Lady Black Staff, and uh, let her know. Uh, what's this person's name? Her name is Millie. Uh, we will let uh, Lady Blackstaff know that Millie is here and that, um, whom are you? My name is Sheev. I'm, I'm the new owner of Troll Skull Manor. Please, if something happens, send word to me there. We'll do. Um, and we'll let Lady Blackstaff know that you are the one who brought her to safety. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now go, get some rest. It is late. She walks out of there slowly and continues just looking over his shoulder at her. Okay. Uh, the, the, like, shit. The two people are still kind of tending to her. Um, they don't seem to have any intention of leaving her side yet. Um, about the time you leave the hospice, uh, you see three familiar people start to stroll up on the street. Uh, kind of smelling a little of sewage. <laughs> My friends, I she's in there. Um, I, all I can do is hope. Balthazar, I, I'm not a man who goes to the gods, and I'm never going to pretend to be. But I know you are. If I could ask that you pray for her safety. Yes, of course. I'll make a prayer for her. Meta question. When do uh, clerics get uh, <laughs> divine intervention? <laughs> oh, that's level 10. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Make level ten, but level roll. twenty uh, clerics can. Uh, it's guaranteed, isn't it? It's guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> level twenty clerics OP. Yeah. Pretty much everything at level twenty is OP except for a wizard. Warlocks. Really? I don't really look warlocks too much at warlocks twenty. Warlocks level twenty ability is just once per long rest they can get all of their spell slots back. I thought it was um it was basically the. Uh... A, spe a class feature of uh, the wiz what the wizard has. It's basically like a mildly buffed version. Or even then, like, just a... Yeah, it's basically just the same thing as Arcane Recovery, but they don't need to take a short rest. Yeah. It's, so it's just they can, spend, they can spend a minute to, like, get their uh, spell slots back, but not their Mystic Arcanum uh, Gosh, spells back, I believe. That, that's... Wow. wow. So in other words, they can cast four more spells. <laughs> I think going 20 levels into Warlock is foolish. It definitely sounds like it. <laughs> so you guys make your way back to uh, Troll Skull? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. need to go talk to Lef. Yeah. Uh, as you arrive, it's pushing 3 a.m. Um, so it'll be either... 
a very late night. Oh, you guys rested before all this, so mm-hmm. yeah, you guys are good. Yeah. Um, so you guys make your way back to Troll Skull Manor. Um, it's very early in the morning, but you guys are still with, fairly rested. With nary a missing hit points, except except actually, uh, Raven's hit points got. <laughs> she got <slapped>. destroyed. <laughs> I, I was like, I kind of did fifteen damage to her. And I can imagine she's probably got about as much health as I do. So Yeah, she's she's pretty rough right now. It's okay. She's gonna spend all day taking a nap. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. None of that. Jeez. Way to get her. We still got an hour and a half left. <laughs> hey, sorry. It's all like good. I said, them then those ten hour work days. Yep. That's rough. Okay, yeah. so you guys make your way back to Troll Skull Manor. Uh, what would you guys yeah. like to do? Um, when we get in, uh, Sketch is just going to say to everyone, so remember that not a word gets out about me, right? Who? No, this isn't one of the, I'm not joking here. I, I am really serious here. Don't say a thing. My dear... I shan't breathe a word of it to anybody. Don't say a thing to laugh, okay? I promise. But if Lef already knows, it's not my fault, alright? Sketch is just gonna walk up to uh Sketch is just gonna walk up to her room and close and lock the door. And then Sketch will uh, go to sleep. Okay. Yeah, Raven kind of like zombie makes her way to her bedroom and just passes out. (laughs) She will go up to his room and just sit down. Do we have beds yet? Um, Not yet. Beds have not been delivered yet. Man. Most uh, actually, I don't think we've actually gone to. We actually haven't gone to the uh, guildmaster yet. That's exactly. What <laughs> oh I was yeah, saying. that's right. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done that yet. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning's duty. <laughs> really uh, but we, I'm pretty sure yeah. most uh, equipment packs that come in, uh, that come from uh, starting equipment contain a bedroll. Oh, I mean, yeah. Remember, I've got that jewel encrusted bedroll with the feet with the griffin feathers in it. All yep. right. <laughs> Sheev has a very nice bedroll. Um, <laughs> Sheev, you actually, realize... No, I don't have a bedroll. <laughs> Sheev, you realize that your room is actually dust-free. Sheev calls out for Lef. Lef, my friend. Are you here? No response. No dust to communicate now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Lef, I'm. I'm going to assume that this was you. I I appreciate that. I I've had a rough rough night. Uh, we we found my friend Millie. I I don't know what's going on with her. She might die. I I hope not. Uh, Sheev's gonna go over to a window and and breathe fog into it, so that Ref, Lef might be able to write on it. No response. Ah. Well, my friend, I trust. I believe she'll be all right, but I don't know. All I can do is sleep. I can't control this. Yes, go to sleep so the sketch may slit your throat so that you may never speak <laughs> again. <laughs> again. <laughs> She gets this weird feeling about Sketch wanting to slit his throat and locks his doors. <laughs> you think that's going to stop Sketch? <laughs> Sketch, make a sleight of hand check for your thieves tools. <laughs> <laughs> make a thieves tool check. Left. I think Sketch is up to something. Keep an eye on her, please. <laughs> I got ghosts. <laughs> you got ghost. We don't know if it's just one, alright? Millie, Millie might be the second ghost. 
uh, Ghost Girlfriend Part Two. <laughs> so hey, actually, think think about this for a second. Who killed the three cultists? You killed one. I'll have you. I know. killed. Uh, hey, I stabbed one, and all three dropped. That's some ultra rogue shit there. That is true. And, who who and almost then... killed Raven? <laughs> 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 and who killed the ghost? Keleth and Balthazar, you just hear Sketch and Sheev yelling across the the house to each other. <laughs> that was meta. I was speaking, I was speaking in southern accents. I know. That was out of character. I wasn't speaking in whatever accent I've got Sheev doing this. <laughs> you weren't speaking Sievelish. <laughs> yeah. She mm. Sheev's gonna go to bed. He's tired, mm. mentally. Not so physically, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, as sleep takes you, um, you all level up. Oh, neat. Neat! Yeah. I don't yes. know what... Yes! <laughs> oh, wait. I get a feat from that. Oh, yeah, I'm getting my feet. Um, but uh, first, yeah, feet uh, or ASI? Yes. Uh, level, level, up. Up. Oh. level plus character man, sir. So let's roll for hit points. Nice. Didn't you say that if it was under the average, just make it the average? Yep. All right. And we also add constitution, so that's plus. Uh, character match should automatically add it in. Yeah. Uh, but, hang on, my current hit points are 24, so add another 7 to that. Yeah, it added it. Character match adds it. How do I uh, add a feat instead of an ability score increase? There should be, uh, if you're in the... Why isn't it? It's grayed out. Yeah, yeah it's grayed out it's... to me too. You have to do it manually. Yeah, you have to do it manually. It's annoying. Yeah, and you said that you added the added um, you added the compendium for us, right? Yes, I did. Huh, should be there, but oh well. So charisma yeah. plus one because I'm taking the act defeat. Oh God! Oh, it's a roll twenty issue. Yeah, I do believe so as well. Um, so I'm just gonna. Do this into D and D Beyond. Um, level four. Override HP. It's thirty-three. I want to select a feat. I am taking the actor feat. <laughs> yeah. Because you need oh, that. I'm taking the uh, diplomat feat, plus one charisma, and I can uh, charm somebody if I talk to them for a minute. Oh God! <laughs> Your dog is plus adorable. One, plus one to charisma, and I have advantage on deception and performance checks when trying to when trying to act like I'm a different person. Hey, nice. guess what? That's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, and, however, like although I, it I won't count like, when you're in tiefling form because that's who you act as most of the time. Yeah, we we did agree on this. Like, yep. it, it would be I'm not like considering like tiefling sketch to count to that. Um, yeah. but another thing is I can perfectly mimic the speech of another uh, or the uh, another. I can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures. I must have heard the person speaking or heard the creature make the sound for at least one minute. A successful insight check contested by my deception check, which I'm pretty sure would be at advantage, um, allows the listener to determine that the effect is fake. So, I'm pretty sure, like, question on this. Mm -hmm. Um, given my changeling capabilities... Would you possibly allow me to perfectly mimic a lion's roar? Mm. How about if I see a tabaxi? <laughs> You'd need to find a lion first. 
Well, thank God we have a druid. <clears throat> this is true. However, the druid has not <laughs> seen a lion. Dun, dun, dun. Eh, panther's close enough. <laughs> Could do a mountain lion. That just sounds like a woman screaming. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what, in the woods, that is the creepiest sound you'll ever hear. I now have a charisma of 16. I have a plus 3 on all of my charismas. I'm about to get and... a plus 4. Oh yeah? Well, my deception is a plus 7, thanks to expertise. Nice. I took expertise in insight and deception. I get a... Double proficiency in persuasion. You do? Yeah. Wait, uh, when you say double proficiency, does that just mean, like, does it actually say you double your proficiency bonus, or does it, or do you just have, like, the proficiency bonus twice? If you are already proficient in the skill, you add double your proficiency bonus to checks you make with it. Got it. <laughs> that is... <laughs> wow. So that Force. means I'd get a plus ten in per in persuasion, right? I'm sorry, she. What was that? Uh, since I'm getting a double proficiency bonus in persuasion, that means I get a plus ten in it, right? Uh, so it would, double proficiency would be plus four, and then whatever your bonuses are, whatever the bonuses are. All right. Because your proficiency a... right now is two, right? Or does it three now that you're four? I forget. Uh, you get it. You your proficiency bonus goes up to level three at fifth level, I believe. So, mm. yeah. So once you're fifth level, it'll be plus double your proficiency. It'll be plus six. Okay. Cool. Oh, I was I was thinking. Um, since I had a, it's a pl I've got a plus five to it is already. Oh yeah, it isn't anything like that. It isn't like. Oh, okay. Yeah, it isn't like you double your skill, it's just you double your proficiency bonus. Correct. So I get the plus five plus four? Yeah, so it's nine. Still. You seriously have a maxed out charisma already? Uh no, it I've got the uh the skill in what's it called? Perfit in persuasion. Oh, so, so sorry, what's your charisma at? My charisma is now at eighteen. Okay, so that's four. So your uh, your persuasion is plus eight. Cool. Because it's four from the charisma itself, and then sorry, actually, there was just some lightning. With the skill, I get six in charisma, and then double the proficiency. So that would be eight. 10. No, eight. Okay. Eight then. Because your because the thing is your your charisma itself is plus four, so mm -hmm. that means that that is basically the modifier for that. And then you have your proficiency bonus, and your proficiency bonus is already added to that skill. I understand now. Yep, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So you base. So yeah, it's eight. Um, when you have some time, I guess you can um work on changing it uh, to plus eight. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just double checking all everything lines up. Plus six, plus two, minus one, minus three, uh, plus seven for deception, which I have advantage on. Minus one, plus six. Yeah, everything seems to be good. Oh, didn't mean to post that. <laughs> to a maximum of zero. Huh? Increase your oh, charisma should... score by one to a maximum <laughs> of zero. Yeah. For some reason, I copied and pasted it, and it was really janky. Uh, if you if it's already uh, to the skill, you get, double your proficiency bonus with checks. So yeah, you get expertise in that. If you spend one minute talking to someone who can understand what you say, you can make a persuasion check contested by the insight check. If you or your companions are fighting the creature, your check automatically fails. Your check exceeds. Uh, the target is charmed by you as long as it remains within 60 feet of you and for one minute thereafter. Well, I got persuasion for days now, so... I have deception for days. <laughs> Hella. Yeah, I've got six in deception. 
My persuasion still isn't that bad. It's still plus five. Which is a solid bonus, and I'm not going to take my charisma up any higher. Unless magic items. Um, so in the morning... Um, hello, Barney, what are you doing here? Um, <laughs> you scared by the lightning? Um, in the morning, uh, when uh, Kelleth wakes up, I'm going to ask him what was in the list of items, what was in the pile of items that I just shoved into his arms. I'm working on that right now. I can't, I'm trying to find the one more thing I'm missing. I want to make sure I get the description right for you guys. It's a it's a dagger of insta death. Uh, yeah, instantly die kills the person who held it. So you're dead, and Kelleth is dead. Ha ha. <laughs> what now? I thought I saved the image, but I guess I didn't. Um, I might have to retcon the description. But yeah, as long as we have a basic idea of what it is. Oh, uh, two malachite, one ruby. That's a pretty hefty amount of money. Uh, two ceremonial daggers worth fifty gold each well, to the right seller. You robbed an altar to Paylor, so just saying. Yeah, thinking about it some more, that was probably a bad move. <laughs> No, what could there possibly go wrong? Got the plus eight on it now. Noise. Oh, it might be. Honestly, like we were, I was, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't look to like who the altar was for. I was just like secret hideout with a like secret alcove with a <laughs> uh, where a bunch of cultists were hiding out. This can't be good. Like here, just take all this shit. It might be worth something. Hmm. A dagger with a strange handle looks like a skull. When we wake up, I'm gonna ask uh, when uh, she, uh, it's when Raven wakes up. I'm gonna ask her if she can identify the things. Oh, like see if anything's magic. Um, she will say that yes, the uh, the one dagger with the skull handle is magical. Of course it is. Uh, does she have identify? Uh, yes, she'll spend ten minutes to identify. Well, I guess we make breakfast. Yep. Um, uh, and she says, "Now I got to find the." friggin' description of it. Um, essentially what it is, is it's a dagger that when you are 10 feet away from something, you can attack, and it'll create a silhouette of yourself attacking the enemy that's 10 feet away. It gives you a 10-foot reach, sounds, essentially. That sounds like Ooh. specifically for sketch. Ooh. I Did mean, it's a dagger. Sketch? Sorry? No, I <laughs> doubt that he would have, but... <laughs> oh! 10-foot reach with a rogue! I mean, it's not only a dagger, but it would, like, if it's a, and is it a plus one, or is it just the reach? It is just the reach. It's not a just plus. Just the reach. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's still, so it's technically a downgrade in terms of damage, uh, but, it, <laughs> good God. And but, once we sell all this stuff we got, we can get some nice beds. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, if you guys want to pass me, uh, let me just have a look. If you guys want to uh, toss me another twenty-five gold, I can head over to the guildmaster and pay off that a hundred gold for the uh, fee, and then you guys can work on possibly uh, maybe getting some of the getting some of the daggers and whatnot. Sold to the rat people. Uh, and all these jewels. Does I I assume Sheev's down there and was there whenever uh, everything was being counted, right? For the items. Yeah. I would assume so. Yes. All right. She says, "How about we take the uh, the twenty five gold from the that altar." 
Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So I'll just take that and I'll uh, go to the guildmaster to have this place paid off. Before you leave, dear, do you know who might be willing to buy the daggers and the ore? <clears throat> uh, you would know of the vendors in the city that you could go to. Uh, yeah, given that these are ceremonial daggers to pay law, it kind of might raise some questions. Um, the well, actually, are the, are the, uh, are the daggers, like, specifically, oh, yes, these are, like, daggers for the Dawn Father, or are they, like, just typical ceremonial daggers? Uh, they don't look like they have any, um, symbols or religious markings to the Dawn Father. Okay, so Sketch is still very much unaware that we that uh, we robbed from the <laughs> that we robbed from an altar to the Dawnfather. So she has no issue with telling you. Just like there are a couple of vendors in uh, in the in the marketplace, I assume. Yes. Yeah, there are a couple of vendors in the marketplace that might uh, purchase some of that stuff. You might be able to get uh, you know get what they're worth there. The jewels and everything actually. Uh, we might we we might be able to find some uh places that just offer trade and we'll be willing to trade the uh gems instead of coin. So might as well keep those. It's just the daggers. I would suggest uh, in case anything goes wrong, maybe tell them that tell them that uh we were out adventuring. Uh, one day, and I uh, know if they recognize it as like from a god or something instead of some demon. Uh, say that we found some priests out one day while adventuring, or I don't know, it's an old family heirloom from uh, Sheev's family, and he's in hard times. <laughs> I'll think of something, my dear. Don't you worry. Okay, so I have the 100 gold. Because uh, I got seventy, because I have seventy-five in my thing, and with the twenty-five from uh, the <laughs> from the loot pile, uh, I'll go to the guild master. Okay. Um, as you go to leave, um, were you with Raven when she spoke with her sister the other day? Spoke with her sister. Yes. I don't um, know. No, Fair. I wasn't. Okay. No, that was um that was Balthazar and Kelleth. That's right. Um as you go to leave, uh you see this um female uh, human approaching the door to knock on it. Oh, uh, sorry, can I help you? Um yes, I'm looking for Raven. Uh, your family or something? Uh yes, I'm her her oldest sister. Hmm. Can I make an inside check on something? Like, can I see if it, like, does she seem like she's bearing good news, or is it just, like... It is visible that she does not have good news. Hmm. Okay, uh, I guess I'll... Yeah, sure. Uh, just step inside. Sorry that we haven't uh, gotten the place properly worked out yet. We're in the middle of trying to get this place fully paid off. No, that's fine. I completely understand. So, uh... Go ahead. And then I'll let her in with, uh... everyone else, and I'll head over to uh, the Guildmaster. Okay. Um... So you leave and head to the Guildmaster. Um... Mm -hmm. she, she says to Raven, um... Man, I hate that she's not here. Um, that we can do this at a later point, because yeah. otherwise it might lose some of its impact. Yeah, it definitely will. So we'll we'll pause that part there. Um, okay, so you head to the guildmaster. Um, yep. And he instantly recognizes you as you walk in. Says, "Oh, you're back, eh? What have you got for me?" Yes. Uh, so I was the one. Yeah, uh, I believe. If I remember uh, correctly, you told us that a hundred gold pieces were needed to uh, get the uh, to pay off 
uh, all the guilds for Troll Skull Manor. Uh, no, now you're going to make me relook it up, you son of a gun. Uh, yeah, well, it was 100 gold. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just... I'm thinking it was for the, just for the initial, yes. Um, yeah. That is just for the initial, initial um, living expenses, essentially. Of course. Yeah. Um, of course not. It wouldn't just be a uh, hundred gold, and then we get to live there forever. Of course, that would be the upkeep costs. I would never try and swindle you like that. But uh, we do have here uh, one hundred gold for the initial payments. Okay. Oh, excuse me. You hand over the the gold, and he counts it out, and says, mm, "Yes, okay. Uh, I will make sure we have uh, the appropriate things sent over." Um, are you looking to have any renovations done or anything like that in the long run? Uh, at the moment, we aren't really looking into that. Um, of course, we might, you know, uh, want the place probably cleaned up. But if I remember correctly, that is included with the initial 100 gold. Like, just, you know, any broken windows get fixed. Any uh, Oh, no, 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 dear friend. Uh, this is just for guild licenses and contracts to get your initial living expenses done. If you wish to have any repair work done, we're going to need more money. Is he trying to swindle me? Make an insight check. Uh, uh, if he's lying, then this might be a different number. He seems, uh, to, be, is... he seems to be telling you yeah, the truth. Well, seems to be telling me the truth yep. at a 17. Yep. Oh, well, I apologize for not understanding the terms and conditions correctly. That was, uh, I'm new to being a homeowner, so I hope that you forgive my, uh, naivete. Um, no problem, young one. Um, in fact, we have actually sent an appraiser over to take a look at everything. Uh, and in order to fix up your building, it'll cost roughly a thousand gold pieces to completely renovate the building. And that'll take place over 12 days. A, a thousand? One thousand gold, yes. If Sketch was taking a drink, she would do a spit take. And what that will do is that would completely renovate the tavern. New windows, doors, everything. Um, fix the roof, things like that. Um, <laughs> He goes on to continue that another 150 gold will be needed if you wish to open it up as a bar. Oh, well, that's that's certainly a lot more reasonable. A thousand but you would need to also pieces. renovate it to so, open it up for so the bar. The the other oh. the extra 150 is for the, like the other licenses and contracts that you're going to need to be able to have the bar. Oh yeah, that like I get that much, but like yeah. sketch like is, was there a seat nearby <laughs> when Sketch heard the 1,000 gold? There is, and you kind of sit back at it like, oh boy. She fell into it. <laughs> just, I, you're, you're not understanding just how in disrepair this building is. <laughs> oh my. Good golly goodness. What kind of dump did Folo give us? Oh. Well... With all due respect, Guildmaster, uh, I, I believe that uh, the renovations take a backseat to uh, things like, you know, beds and uh, also the, you know, making sure that we have, uh, you know, food to eat. So if we do decide to uh, get the place properly fixed up and renovated, we'll come back with that 1,000 gold. Of course, of course. Just know that, or at Alpha least want to make there. it, you know, a lot more. <laughs> Althazar, your holy symbol begins to crack. <laughs> hey, that that was out of character. No, I know. <laughs> I'm ashamed of you. One thousand. Well, actually, I mean, we could just instead change it from one thousand gold to one hundred platinum. We're one hundredth of the way there. Hey. Oh yeah, that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> 1,000 gold. Maybe with my super persuasion I can convince a merchant to give me 1,000 gold for these daggers. You can certainly try. <laughs> yep, that's the, that's the next note. 1,000 gold to flip house. 
Uh, so, uh, with uh, your, if I may be so kind to ask, uh, we are currently, you know, I believe that one of our first priorities would be uh, getting some beds for all of us. What, uh, do you have any idea of uh, the estimated price of a, just a standard bed, nothing like that nobles would need and uh, something reasonably comfortable? Uh, just a standard bed uh, depends on the carpenter you go to. We just supply mm -hmm. like the linens and whatnot. Oh, yeah, of course. I was just asking for any possible recommendation. Because, well, I mean, uh, fine, he's a gnome, right? Yes. Yeah, fine, gnome like yourself with such amazing posture must have a wonderful bed uh, to sleep on. Uh, make a persuasion check. Uh, there we go. Persuasion says, well, you do have some good taste. Uh, if you go to the castle district... Uh, there should be a carpenter um, by the name of um, by uh, Gr Grismore. And uh, just tell him that I sent you. Uh, give him this letter and he starts to write something out. Um, folds it over and seals it, hands it back to you. And says, just give him this letter and everything will be taken care of. And he'll, he'll get you a good deal. Hmm. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem. Sketch will uh, stand up and uh, with a swish of her tail, just uh, starts heading out of the just starts heading out of the building. Okay. Uh, after that, Sketch will, I guess, head back to. Uh, Troll Skull Manic is... Sketch is out of money! <laughs> Sketch early took what she needed. Okay. Uh, what do you guys want to do at the house? Well, Sheev is going to gather up everything to go sell it, and he asks uh, everybody else if they want to come with him or stay behind. Yeah, so I guess we can go up. Indeed. Uh, I'm. I make my way to the um, district. Okay. Let's bring up the water deep map now. Do do do. Scene change. Okay. So you make your way up to the market, or down to the market, I should say. And uh, you see the various stalls um, open for business as per usual. Kyle's going to stay at the manor. Eating. So it's probably just me and Balthazar? It sounds like it, yes. Alright. Uh, if Sketch... Uh, oh, wait, no. I was just saying, like, if... Depending on uh, where the guildmaster started at, or like where that area is, I might pass by the market, so I might see you guys and join you at a later point, like once the timeline matches up. Neat. But, uh... I look for a, um... A gem salesman in uh, the market first. Okay, uh, make an investigation check for me. Man, you're asking me to use my eyes, and I'm not appreciating that. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> not appreciating that, okay? Um, <laughs> I also tried to look for one. Sure, go ahead. Hmm. And because I see the eight, I'll be nice and not make it be she with advantage. <laughs> um, you both start to try and find someone who's selling gems. Uh, and then you just get distracted by an alchemist who see, who has a whole bunch of different potions for sale. Hmm. Ooh, three potions. She makes a mental note of that and keeps walking around. 
Okay. Uh, it's about another half an hour before you realize that uh, you pass a stall a few times. Uh, a gentleman is selling some gemstones. Neato. And I, would it be at this point that Sketch would... Uh... Or yes, right, about this point, you them. are you're coming into the marketplace, um, and sketch. You, you do happen, you do hear the familiar wigs for sale. I lay up. another oh, day, wow. sketch. Another day. <laughs> right now, right now, right now, there's uh, important money to be have. Trust in the noble to make us some money. Yeah, except you couldn't find the place. <laughs> I'm good with we're my actually mouth. Walking around the place. With my words, actually, not with my eyes. Um. Oh. Also, if you want to send me the um, I'm assuming that we all agree that the dag is going to me. No, I want it. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you want to send me the information for the dagger, then I will when I can find it. It's on my laptop. No worries. So. Um, uh, it's nothing too bad. As long as, like, does it require attunement or is it just a magical dagger? Uh, that would require me to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I do believe it's attunement, but don't quote me on it just in case. I believe it requires attunement. Um, for an item like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I will, yeah, I'll meet up with you guys and go. So, uh, did you manage to find a good place to sell the daggers not yet um we're gonna be stopping by the uh s gem salesman here first and she walks up to him uh it's it's a uh, it's just, a just shakes her head from side to side for a second and goes can't even listen to instructions <laughs> uh it's a young lady who whom you see and she says, uh, greetings, uh, what can I do for you today? Hello there, we, um, we've, in our adventures, we have come across a few gems that we would, uh, like to sell to you. Ah, yes. Uh, let me take a look at them. Uh, and you place the gemstones on the table. Are you selling all of them? Yeah. Okay. Um, she brings out a little eyeglass and starts looking at the different gems, uh, mutters to herself and puts, puts them off to the side and says... Ah, yes. Um, the prices that I can do are uh, a total of... 10, 15... I did the math, it's 50. Okay, a total of 50 gold for the gems. Hmm. Ah, 50 gold, ah. Wait, 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 I might have that wrong. Uh, it, I don't want to give me... So that's 25, 30, 35, 40. No, it's, it's 40. Two Malachi. Oh, yes, right, two yeah. Malachi. My mistake. Yep. That's what I... Yep. Two Malachi for the ten. Yep, fifty. But, um... Sheev says to her, My dear, this is... I I feel like that you might be shortchanging us a bit. Can I... Can I make, like, a some sort of check to see if, like, that was a... Re if, like, that was a reasonable price for the go for the gems? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can make an insight check while Shiva's trying to yep. get more money. Shiva knows that was a pretty good price, but he he's in swindle <laughs> mode. Yep. Ske Sketch hasn't dealt in gems before, so Sketch is like, eh, this might be good, I don't know. Right, it doesn't seem like she's Continue on, Shiva. Yeah, uh, Please don't. <laughs> he points at the ruby, he says, this here is a rare blood ruby. Now, I'm, I am by no means a gem expert, but you and I both know that it would bring the wealth, the worth well above 50 gold. I, make us another offer. Make a deception check. And I'm going to say at disadvantage. Boy, that was I'm going to say at disadvantage because she is a an expert in gems. Sixteen. Um. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks for a moment. Says 
And very well, 50 for the ruby. Everything else as is. That is acceptable. So, 85 gold. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Don't, I'm, I'm the rogue here, and I'm like, just no when enough is enough. <laughs> He's the talker, though. Indeed. I'll have you know that I'm also a talker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I am concerned for all the gold in this campaign. Yeah, well, Sketch knows when to, like, that's the thing. Sketch isn't in it for the money. Sketch is in it for the people. I'm a noble. I like money. <laughs> okay, so once we get that done, uh, Sketch will say, uh, once, like, <laughs> once uh, we are, uh, sorry, once she, like, steps away with the money, uh, Sketch will be like, me. you know, I did say just, there are, water deep can be fine to trade with gems you didn't have to transfer it to gold this feels better in my hand <laughs> less pointy edges you're saying that you're saying that a bunch of like bumpy probably handled by hundreds of people gold feels better than some rare, shiny, light-reflecting gemstones. Yes, plus, we... That was gotten from an altar to a god, correct? I don't know, I didn't look. I just saw that there was a bunch of shit on an altar that was in the same area as a bunch of cultists, and I just put it into his hand. Well, I just put it into Killer's hands. Well, that sounds cursed to me. No, thank you. Anyway, but uh... I got extra gold for it. More than it was worth, actually. And I, I assume that we're far away from where she can hear us. Yeah, you guys are kind of walking the marketplace. And she just gives Sketch a little wink. The uh, autumn, the deal, my friend. You don't swindle good working people out of their pay. If they should be swindled. That is the rule of law. I don't think that's a rule of law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say that the code legal does not have anything about that. <laughs> code legal or not, we made some money. I need to see if there's anything in the code legal about merchants. <laughs> Crimes against uh... citizens. Also, um, question about the letter that I was given by the guildmaster. Coach was Street. it sealed? Damn right. <laughs> uh, was the letter sealed or was it just like a piece of paper? Uh, the letter is sealed with wax. Okay. Um. Now, let's... Let's see if I can't find somewhere to sell this these daggers. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check for me. Oh, yeah. I gotta use my no. eye. <laughs> oh, no. Sketch doesn't help. Hey! <laughs> first um, of the night for me. It doesn't take you long at all. Um, the One of the first uh, merchants that you ask that deals in weapons says... Oh, those look like ceremonial daggers. You're going to want to go to one of the uh, different temples and see what they'll offer you. Which one would you recommend exactly? Um, well, the closest one that you can get to would be uh, uh, the Hospice of St. Lobson. Indeed. And uh, Sheev turns to Sketch. Well, while I'm there, or while we're there, we can check up, up on Millie as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, no problem. You have a wonderful day. Now, one group of people that she won't try to swindle priests because <laughs> priests, priests can get rid of ghosts <laughs> <laughs> they can what they can get rid of ghosts uh i've got to reevaluate my life 
<laughs> Time to swindle the priests. <laughs> oh boy. She turns to uh, Balthazar. Can you get rid of ghosts? You saw him get rid of a ghost. <laughs> Is that what happened? I thought, I thought that my my magic missiles forced it out. I think you help. Ah, thank you. Balthazar. I'm I just surrounded by a bunch of ding dongs. <laughs> Balthazar promised not to get rid of Lef, alright? He's a good ghost. So long as he's a good spirit? Uh, he cleaned not... my room. You hear this voice oh, in your head? She. Lef, is that you? <laughs> no response. <laughs> Balthazar, do you have a restoration spell? I think I might be going crazy. <laughs> now you think you're going crazy. <laughs> Let's go to the the church, the temple. Yeah, mm. let's go. All right, you make your way to the hospice of St. Lopson. Um as you enter and you look around, you don't see Millie in any of the beds in the first floor. Hmm. Uh Sheev approaches a uh, a priest there. He looks at you and says, uh, greetings, what can I do for you today? Hello, um, we have, we came across these two ceremonial daggers, uh, we were directed here to, um, in the hopes that you might buy them from us, um, would you be able to? Uh, we are always accepting donations. However, if you're looking for a monetary replacement for them, uh, we'll be do we'll do twenty five gold each. Hmm. Turns out the priest isn't the right buyer. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, to be fair, whenever I say anything like that, I always say to the right seller. Yeah. Um. I, I believe I might hold on to these for now. I I get the feeling that I I believe that they are worth a bit more. Um, however, I'm here for a secondary reason as well. Uh, last night I brought a a friend of mine in. She she had been touched by a ghost. Her name was Millie. It it looked like somebody important came down to deal with her. Do, do you know? Where she is, or how she is doing? Uh, yes, she is up on the third floor in the intensive unit. Uh, question. Yes. In the time that I spent walking uh, along the streets, would gossip have spread about the guards searching for a missing person? When they were searching for Millie? Yes. Um. Because I'm... I don't... Because I'm just assuming... The guards haven't heard about this yet. <laughs> um, so nothing yet that you have um picked up on are suggesting that the guards are not are not looking for her any longer. Um, however, you oh you weren't there. Never mind. Yeah, you uh, to your knowledge, the guards are still looking for Millie. Okay. Uh, when we finish up here, I think Sketch might do something. Okay. Um, but yes, she is up on the third floor for in the intensive care unit. Uh, are, are we able to go up there? Um, I can ask, but they don't usually allow visitors. That, that's about what I figured. Um, um, are you a relative? I'm a friend. I'm the one that brought her in last. Oh, 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 yes, yes, follow me. Uh, the others must stay here, though. I look down and say, "I'll, I'll be back in a few moments. Please wait for me, or not." I'm so tempted to say that I'm a sister. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. yes, the pink teeth thing looks just like the half elf, or is it? No, she's a full elf, isn't she? She's a full elf. She's a full elf. Yeah. Hey, ad adoption is a thing. <laughs> Okay. Um, he leads you to the staircase that uh, leads up. Uh, you go up the first spiral staircase, and looking around, 
as you're getting ready to go up to the third floor. Uh, the second floor seems to have um, little desks kind of scattered around and bookshelves with various tomes and scrolls on them. Uh, he leads you up one more floor, and each of these, each of this set on this floor, every section seems to be pardoned, uh, partitioned off um, with individual doors and individual walls for each section up here. Um, he leads you down a corridor to one of the doors, um, and as, as he opens the door, uh, you do see um, a lady in there with... Uh, Hold on, let me get this right for you, so I don't mess it all up. Note taking time, isn't it? Uh, you see a lady. Come on, where is it? Um, with short black hair, um, a dark skin complexion, wearing two ruby, uh, two emerald earrings, um, a vest and a collar going up to her neck, and you recognize this as Vajra Safar. I was like, that's Lady Blackstaff, isn't it? It is. Uh, as you enter, she goes, Ah, oh, Sheev, thank you so much for finding Millie. Oh, I don't know what I would have done if, with, if you hadn't. Oh, they're still trying to figure out exactly what's wrong with her. They're not sure. Did they tell you what I told them last night? They did. Um... We looked into the uh, um, the the mausoleum, and uh, we found a few dead bodies. That is our doing, yes. Um, though we only stabbed one of them, and they all dropped. Ah, uh, yes. I believe that they were linked together through some blood magic somehow. I should have. I actually should have checked if the other ones had, even had stab wounds. Uh, when, 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 uh, when the, when the priest took a look at the bodies, all three of them had a, a gash in their side as though their guts, uh, they were slashed and then their guts, their insides spilled out. Um, they were all identical at the exact same spot. It was very bizarre. Um, but that's the reason why, (laughs) yeah. Uh, but that's the reason why we are led to believe that they, uh, were connected somehow through some form of magic. Indeed. Uh, do you know who they are? Or uh, why they wanted Millie? The only thing we know of is that they they seem to worship Orcus. And he's bad news. Uh, chances are they're trying to get to me. Uh, I don't mean to be egotistical or full of myself, but I'm a very powerful caster. Um, and if they can get to me, that would, I'm sure that would, uh, accelerate any plans they may have. A very powerful cast indeed. Um, Sheev's going to take out one of the two daggers and show it to her. Hank Hilt first, of course, and Mm -hmm. say, we discovered these. I, I was busy rushing Millie here at the time, but, so I do not know where exactly they found them. But do you believe that these would have anything to do with them? Or how these might have been used? She takes the dagger from you and holds it in her hand. Um, And you see her trace an arcane symbol in the air. And her eyes kind of start to glow a little bit. um, As she looks at the dagger. And she says, well, it's not magical. Seems to just be a ceremonial dagger of sorts. Um, it was all right with you. Can I hold on to this and see what we can find out? You may. Okay. Um, here, let me give you some compensation for this. And she will hand you 25 gold. Oh, well, I guess we're getting... I'm glad I only gave her the one then. So. I appreciate that. Um. This, whenever you find out more about Millie, would you have a messenger, messenger sent to me at Troll School Manor, please? Um, yes, or I could just contact you directly. That would be amazing. It, are you able to do... I, I assume you're able to do that. There's a lot of things I can do. <laughs> Indeed. I, I hope to reach 
your level of power one day. Like trap you in a glass bead. With the earth's <laughs> crust. <laughs> Okay. Uh, with that, she says, I must take my leave now. I must head back to the tower. I have some work to do. Indeed, of course. Thank you, Lady Blackstaff. Thank you for finding her. Uh, just so you know, uh, we have called off the search since she has been found. Um, of, of course. So. And then she, she leaves. Uh, she goes down to meet back up with uh, his compatriots. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys would have seen her leave the uh, building. He said, she says, I gave her one of the daggers and she gave me 25. Now, let's go see if we can't sell this other dagger for 50. Well, okay. if, well, uh, well, we, I actually have something to I suggest we go do in the castle ward. Uh, we need to get beds. And I managed to find a pretty good deal for something. Oh. I would love to finally be able to sleep in a bed. Yeah, no, I, I'm i afraid I might have to start out in a basic bed. That is tragic. Eh, it depends on how much they cost. Besides, we have managed to get uh, over the amount of gold that we spent for uh, our, you know, startup cost. As she, as Sketch remembers the one thousand gold that she hasn't told anyone else about yet. Uh, can she see if she's trying to hide anything? Um, make an insight check. And you want me to, like, contest it with a deception? Oh, no, no. Don't no. need to. <laughs> um, <laughs> the sketch is still kind of hard to read, you know? You're still a little unnerved by seeing her true form. <laughs> so, so you're just... You take you take it for face value. Of course, of course. <clears throat> well, uh, we might as well head over to the castle ward. It's not that far. Uh, she and asked... we'll... Oh, sorry. And we'll be on the lookout for Grismore, uh, for Grismore. Um, she like asked, sir, what, uh, what price did he say to, uh, to get everything we'd need for, to be a, uh, a bar? Ah, oh, well, uh, in order to get all the titles and everything, all the contracts, uh, it would be, uh, an extra 150 gold. Of course, uh... And that's, did he tell you what exactly titles and contracts that was? Oh, well, just the usual stuff that you would expect of a bar to have, you know, stuff like uh, the permission to serve alcohol. the Alcohol license and chairs and tables and all that. Yeah, it wouldn't re I'm not sure if it would uh, contain the, you know, furnishings and everything, but... Uh, you know, all the guild licenses would come to a hundred, would come to 150 gold. Speaking of which, we just got to make sure that we keep extra gold in our pockets for, uh, when we need to pay the upkeep of the licenses. And how much was that again? Um, the licenses and whatnot are just a straight one-time fee, um, to have the daily, the weekly services, uh, for like the... The, the Dung Guild and blah, 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 yeah, is, yeah. let me okay. reopen this. Um, Taxes. Yes, essentially. Where'd it go? Um, it'll, it's 10 gold per 10 day. Okay. So well, I think that at the very least, we should keep like an extra 30 to 50 gold just in our back pocket, just ready. <laughs> Uh, so we head over to the castle ward. Okay. Um, on on the letter that he gave you, he it does say to Grismore, proprietor of Grismore's of uh, Grismore's beds. 
Uh, mm. So you make your way to the castle ward. Um, gonna ask around to try and find it, or you just want to look for it? I'm gonna ask. Uh, yeah, I'll just ask a person. Like, do you happen to know where uh, we might be able to find uh, Grismore's carpenter? Um, either one of you can make a persuasion check with advantage, or you both can do separate ones. Hey, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make one. I'll make one. Like with that plus eight. Uh, <laughs> plus five, and I got higher. Okay, uh, yeah, but I rolled like a twelve, man. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you kind of split off to try and see who can find the carpenter first. Um, cuteness sells, damn it. Cuteness <laughs> does sell, especially hot pink. Um, you, you ask around, and uh, as you guys get the correct directions, you guys arrive at almost the same exact time. Sketch getting there just a shade before you, Sheev. Um, Sketch is just opening the door and entering as uh, Sheev arrives. Well done, my dear. It seems you know the city better than I do. Mm, that's what happens when you live here. Um, Indeed. Just... Maybe step back for this one. I want to see something. Um, and Sketch will uh, go into the establishment. Okay. And um, we'll uh, walk up with a sense of... With a kind of uncharacteristically... With an uncharacteristic sense of a uh, kind of... Kind of more business sass, if that makes sense. Okay. Gravitas? Yeah, business gravitas. And uh, we'll go up to the... Um, and we'll go up to the counter. Just give me a second, I've got to find something real quick. What's the name of the guild master? I wrote it down. Balami Balana. That's right. Okay. Balami Balana. Got to remember that. Um, we'll go up to the um, counter and say, uh, "If I apologize for coming in so suddenly, uh, I was looking for uh, Grismore. I am uh, one of. I am the secretary of Balami Balamar, the guild master." Now, as you as you look at the person you're talking to, um. He seems a lot younger than you were expecting a clerk to at the front desk to be. He says, Oi, that's me dad. Let me go get him. And he hops down off of a stool. And he, he's barely his head barely goes above the counter. And you see him wander into the back. Is he a halfling? Or a nope. Dwarf? He's just a, a small... A kid. kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, hey, dad, some people here for you. Um, oh, just you, right? Yeah, just Jesus me. Said, uh, there, there's a customer here for you. Um, so he comes back out and says, Pops will be with you in just a second. Um, I, pre I appreciate uh, uh, you getting him so quickly for me. Uh, well, no problem. We always take care of our customers here. Um, and uh, a few moments pass by, and this um, large six-foot behemoth of a man, um, not heavy set, but just built... Uh, comes out and says, Welcome to Grismore's Beds. What can I do for you today? Hi, uh, I was asked to... Yes, uh, I was asked to uh, hand deliver this uh, letter to you. What's this then? He grabs it and says, Oh, what does he want now? And he opens it up and takes a moment to read it and says, Oh, very well. Um, I am to give you five of my best beds. I certainly appreciate that. Mm, Mr. A... Balamar does pay well. Mm, that he does. Uh, he's calling in a favor that I owe him, so not a big deal. Um, where would you like these beds to be delivered? I would appreciate if you were to deliver them to Trollskull Manor. Okay. Oh, that old shithole up in uh, the North Ward there? No, no, yes. fence man, of course. Uh, uh, it is indeed more of a shithole than I originally thought. <laughs> Only because of the 1,000 gold cost. <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> um, just... God damn, what kind of dump did he give us? <laughs> um, hey, we got it for free. <laughs> just... We got it in place <laughs> of a paycheck. Yeah, in place of a 500 gold paycheck. 
And like, now we have to pay a thousand. <laughs> and then it can make you money. Um, yeah, right. He says, very well, I'll uh, have the, the bed shipped up there uh, within the next couple days. I, I won't be right away. i got to finish up one of them because I only have four on hand. But give me a few days and I'll have them up there for you. If you uh, uh, if you manage to send them over and uh, we haven't arrived yet, uh, please give uh, the last remaining bed that you need to uh, to uh, the to the uh, human who goes by the name of Sheev. He uh, I just lean in, and whisper a little bit. I was like, he doesn't really pull his own weight. He seems to uh, think that his noble blood will get him further in life than necessary. Well, should I give him one of my uh, not so good beds then? Because then I could just deliver him later today. Uh, I Can wouldn't she say. Hear this? I make a perception check, her. and you make a uh, sleight of hand or stealth check. So. Yeah. Ah, damn. Oh, that was a low roll. No, yeah. you do not hear this. Um, I'll say, oh no, don't give him anything uh, of low quality that we were promised. He has, you know, still done work, but uh, if maybe you could uh, work on a few other projects first and have his delivered a bit later... I, I can manage that one. Mm, I certainly appreciate it. No problem. So, he says in a louder voice, uh, four of the beds will be delivered later today and the last one will be delivered within the next four or five days. That's certainly very kind of you. And very kind of uh, the Guildmaster. Uh, once we head out of the building, Sketch will um let them know that we're getting that we're getting beds without any hint uh uh to uh Sheev that we are uh, that he is getting his later. Uh Sheev heard him say four or five days, right? Yes. Uh before we head out, Sheev wants to uh to him and say to him my good sir, um and he takes out fifteen gold out of his pouch. Would uh, would you be able to expedite my uh, the producing and shipping of those beds? Make so a, maybe oh, two ahead. days or so. Make a persuasion check at disadvantage because Sketch already had some dealings. <laughs> okay, but advantage because of the money. <laughs> he, doesn't need the fifth, gold. he doesn't need the fifteen gold that badly. Okay. And he slides five more gold up there. <laughs> Twenty gold. Hey, you're, he already gave you the ruling. <laughs> all with disadvantage. Wow. Okay. I it says didn't even beat your, mo your right. money. <laughs> I'm gonna straight roll a d20. Says, you know what? I can make it two and a half, three days. I appreciate that. Pockets the fifteen gold. Hey, you still have to sleep a couple extra days in in the bedroll. <laughs> um, while we are out, schedule say, you know, you guys can uh, go ahead and work on whatever you want. Uh, I need to. Go to Yon and Portal real quick. What are you doing there? If you don't mind me asking. I've got some important business to handle. I see. Well, good luck. Stay safe. You're asking me to stay safe? I, it's... It's a suggestion that is going to fall upon deaf ears, I'm aware, but... Well, I appreciate your, uh, I do appreciate you looking out for me, but I got something I need to do, and I'll head on to the Yawning Portal. Okay. So you, so you start making your way to the Yawning Portal. 
Um, mm -hmm. Chief and Balthasar, what are you doing? I still want to find a special buyer for them ceremonial dagger. Okay. The one ceremonial dagger. <laughs> Correct. Um, we could go to other temples and ask. That would be a good idea. Um, since we're in the castle ward, I, I say the Temple of Seldarin. Yep. I assume I know about it. Yeah, you, and, you would know about it. Uh, that's why it is available for you to see. Um, and now begins the side quest. Can the two not can the two <laughs> ding -dong get the dagger to sell for 50 gold? <laughs> side quest. Alright, so you make your way to the Temple of yeah, the Seldarin. Yeah, like a main quest. It's going to take you a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> Two weeks later. <laughs> as, you, as you enter the temple, it is eerily quiet in here. There are people, and they're moving around, but you don't hear anything. Sheev stays hushed to uh, keep the uh, tone. But walks up to the to a uh, priest. Yep. And as you walk, your footsteps make no sound. Hmm. Is there anything magical about the temple? Make an arcana check. Okay. You can try and cough. <coughs> uh, as you cough, no sound comes out. Um, Balthazar, you've never really dealt with this kind of magic. But it seems as if the entire temple is under the effects of some kind of silence spell. Hmm. She, I guess, noticing this, doesn't, or still walks up to a priest. Uh, as you approach the priest, he looks at you and bows his head and just looks at you quizzically. And... She bows his head back and produces the dagger hilt first, of course. Um, he grabs it, looks at it, and you hear this voice in your head. Um, what are you looking to do with this? Uh, she thinks we're looking to sell it. Uh, we came across it in uh while fighting a a cult, and we believe it to be worth some money. Moment passes. Turns the dagger over, kind of looks at it. Um, then he walks away for a second with the dagger. Um, motions for you to follow. I follow. As you do, he opens up a small door. Um, not it's, and when I say small door, it's it barely fits you guys in here. It's maybe five, 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 uh, six foot tall door. Um. He, he has to duck down a little bit to get in. Uh, and there's a small desk with a person behind scribbling, and no sounds are coming out of it when, while he's writing. Uh, it's just this very odd sensation. Um, he, he looks at the person's writing. The person writing stops, looks at him, nods, opens a drawer, and produces a small coin pouch. Um, counting it out, there's 50 gold there. That is... She thinks... That is perfect. Um, Thanks. Er, I appreciate doing business with you. They both nod to you. Um, the, he hands the dagger over to the person behind the desk. Um, what, what, what's everybody's passive perception? Balthazar, yours was 16, you said? Uh, let me check that small. Well, or that was mine cloth, is 9, so I'm not going to notice anything. 15. 15? Okay. Um, as you're walking away, you kind of glance at your eyes. Um, the end of the dagger, he's turning and taking off as the door shuts behind you. Mm. Shit. What? Shit. Well, mm. Lady Blackstaff ju did say that she was going to, just going to look Let's into get it. one of them, so... <laughs> Oh, well. I guess we should have uh, investigated the dagger. You never investigate the thing that says, like, it can be sold for. Hey. It's, like find it's like finding an item in a game that, like, specifically says 
like a merchant can buy it for a high price that universally means this item is for selling and finding out is an important quest item. <laughs> it's like my Thanks. Wednesday players tell me I am a lawful evil DM. <laughs> Even if I had tried to investigate it, I would have gotten a six. <laughs> so seems like a normal ceremonial dagger to you i got 50 gold out of it i'm happy and i guess we leave okay uh is there anything else you guys want to do hmm. um i want to make my way to the uh that carpenter shop at um by charles skull manor okay uh, so you start making your way up there. Uh, Sketch, what are you doing at the Yawning Portal? Uh, I am going immediately over to Bonnie and saying, got an emergency, I need a homo. No code word, okay. She looks at you, ca ca looks, um, you're so insightful, you realize she's having an inner freak out at this, and she just books it out of there. She says to Durnham, I'll be back, I need to run, and leaves. I look to Dunham and say, uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, didn't get any tip or anything. Uh, I'll buy some lunch, I guess. He says, that's all right. Here we go. Ha start handing these out to some tables that need drinks. <laughs> sorry. And I'll, uh, start handing them out. <laughs> Um, so, you, you start handing out the drinks to the different tables, and people pay you, um, give you the money, and Durnham's watching you the whole time. It takes me a little bit, but eventually I get to the point where, you know, I'm kind of that, uh, I eventually, like, put on the perky, cute, southern girl, like, waitress, uh, feel, and, you know, yep. making, Go ahead. my conversation. Yeah, a couple of the of the regulars say, "Well, it's about time you decided to get some work here instead of just doodling." Hey, well, the gal's got to make sure she uh, gets the right pay for all of her paint supplies, and you know, might as well work, might as well do that sort of thing in a place where I frequent. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so probably about a half an hour goes by before. Alma comes rushing in with Bonnie. Uh, uh, Bonnie as, comes over and grabs the ale from you, and do you hand over all the coins that you would have earned? Yeah, of course. Yep. You hand them all over. Bonnie puts them in her little pouches and continues to hand out drinks and things like that. Uh, Alma brings you over to the corner and says, What could be so urgent that you don't even use the code word? Remember those people I, were, I was with? Yes, and she starts eyeing them. They aren't here. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, she says, no, I yes. Came alone. Yes. What? What about them? I take uh, her hands in mine and kind of like, uh, while she's, um, you know, assume, like, uh, since given the position that I took them in, I'll, um, change my uh, fingernail color to make it look like I have nail polish on. And I just say, they know. You're joking, right? That's not I funny. Was... Nobody's supposed to know about us. I, I they, they, know, they only know about me. I, we were going to save an acquaintance of ours. I'm not gonna club her. <laughs> <laughs> when we're gonna see club, it just it raises up behind behind me. I have so many questions. <laughs> do it, do it. Now. I got you. I got you. My bad, guys. Um, Magic missile. <laughs> um, I say we were doing a job to get us some money. And uh, we were fighting against some undead. Uh, in particular, we were fighting against the uh, uh, kind of being a darkness that it made me weaker. 
like it made me so much weaker i don't i feel like i thought that if i took another hit from that thing it was gonna kill me so it was either reveal myself to them and live or die and have myself revealed to them well i'm much prefer you to live uh, do we need to send in the, the cleaners not the what? cleaners not the cleaners but I want dirt on them all of them as much as you can find I want them to I need them to know that if they say a word of this they won't ever get any they will wish that they that the cleaners had taken care of them very well it'll take me a few days but i'll see what i can come up with and one more thing i want you to train me she kind of cocks her head at that in what Alma, i want you to train me Oh. And I kind of, I kind of like, uh, as tighten my grip as I can with my five strength uh, <laughs> hand and kind of make it like, you know, a bit like a fist and just like a few like taps on her chest. Just, you know. I see. Well, I'll dig up the dirt, and then we'll get started. I appreciate it. I, I feel like there's only so much that I can really do with uh, the, you know, sneaking around thing. I might as well learn to properly fight. We'll get you there. I appreciate it. And that's where we're going to stop tonight's episode. Unless you guys want to keep going. Because I was 20 minutes late. Uh, I could go for another 20 minutes. Okay, cool beans. Uh, uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm getting dirt on all of you. <laughs> Alright, so... <sighs> Every single one of you... <laughs> Alma, Lawful neutral. <laughs> Alma says, uh, I will now take my leave if that is alright with you. Apparently Just, uh, I have some work to do. Look. You know that I wouldn't sell you out, right? I would like to think that. Our secret goes to my grave, but you know, I want to make sure that I actually get one. Instead of just, you know, shriveling up in some old tomb. I can't imagine what you went through, but we'll take care of it. And remember, if you ever need to get in touch with me, uh, I'm at Troll Skull Manor. Oh, I know. It's a shithole. I know. A little gold in that place will look pretty, though. Can you please repeat that? It kind of lagged out for me. Oh, sorry. Uh, a little gold in it'll look pretty, though. A little gold in most anything will look pretty. Especially people. <laughs> we don't need that luxury. Yeah. Outfits. Outfits. Oh, there are ways besides paying for outfits. You know this. Hey. I'll have you know that while I, you know, 
might fit the archetype of a rogue. I ain't no thief. I know. Probably your biggest downfall is being one of us. We do what we must to survive. And sometimes, we have to take what's not ours. We've been hunted for too long. And she gets up and goes to leave. I just, uh, sit back and I order a drink. Bonnie brings you a drink, five silver. Yep. That's half of my money. (laughs) I didn't pick up any extra. (laughs) Okay. All right. So what were you doing, Sheev and Balthazar? I'm going to the, uh, the carpenter shop. At, right, in Troll Skull Alley. Troll Skull Alley. <sighs> oh, pardon me. All Would right. it be the uh, bent nail? Yes. I don't think I've ever actually been in there. So, let me bring it up real quick. Do-do-do. Oh, here, let's do this. Show to players. All right. Um, So as you make your way towards the carpenter shop, um, Make sure I got this right real quick. Yes, okay. Um, So as you make your way to the bent nail, um, a small wooden sign above the shop's main door is bare except for a large bent nail sticking out of it. Um, The front room, as you enter, displays uh, ornate wooden furniture as well as a selection of bows and crossbows. Um, The wall behind the counter is lined with rows of finely carved wooden canes, quarterstaves, and shields. Um, a male half-elf comes out of the back as you enter, says, Ah, oh, welcome. My name is Talisulvanar Felbranch. You can call me Tally. Well, hello there, Tally. Um, I'm, I'm Sheev. I, I recently moved into Troll Skull Manor. Right down the road there. Oh, you moved into that dump? I did, I did. <laughs> Well, welcome, neighbor. It needs some... some love. For sure. Um... I've... I came in today to ascertain as to how much it would cost to buy a few tables and a few chairs. Usually that sort of thing is commissioned through the guild. I see. Um, however, for a neighbor, how many are you looking for? Um, I turned to Balthazar. Balthazar, well, I have one table and one chair. <laughs> how many do you think we should get for now? Three tables, six chairs, five chairs, two tables? Seven chairs. I would. <laughs> <coughs> I would think that the table that we have will suffice for now. We might need to get one chair for everyone. Indeed. So, we've got one. Four more chairs then. Yeah. How much would it cost to commission four chairs? Uh, four chairs will only put you back forty silver. Uh, that is fantastic. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Do you want some of the ones that I already have done, or do you want me to make something special for you? How do you want me oh, to do um, this? Can I look at what you've done quickly? Of, of course. And uh, there are multiple like dining room chairs 
uh, in the front uh, for um, entryway. Um, they, they look of good wood quality, sturdy. Don't look like they'll easily break. Yes, yes, these these are to my liking. Uh, I'll get four of these, please. Of course. Um, do you need me to have somebody bring them over to you, or...? Um, would that cost anything? Um, extra five silver. Uh, Balthazar, you, you're a strong lad, aren't you? Yeah, I, I think I can manage a few chairs. Yes, as do I. I, I believe we'll be fine, um... But uh, there is something I'd like to commission. Of course. Uh, I would like a a comfier chair, as to say, one that's that's well cushioned, uh, sort of like a um, a throne like chair. Hmm. How big do you want it to be? I want it to. Mm, Oh, with the armrests and everything, maybe two and a half feet wide, and not very tall. Uh, maybe something along the lines of a a single love seat with only one seat in it. I can use what something. I want it to be is I want it to be a throw. <laughs> Just <laughs> I can do something like that. And as you look around, you realize that all of his furniture, none of it is padded. He says, uh, yeah. that'll cost a little bit extra. That's not something I usually do. Of course. All in all, you're looking for about uh, one gold piece for the chair. That is perfect. So, 40 silver and one gold piece. Mm, yes, I require um, uh, 50 silver up front for the, the chair that I will make you. I'm going to go ahead and get, just give him five gold. Oh, okay. Or, wait. What's the conversion rate? Ten silver is one gold? F yeah. Okay, yeah. So it would, it would be five gold for the uh, chair. I'm sorry. I always get my conversion rates for silver to gold all wrong. Five gold for the chair? Yes. All right. Then I'll give him nine gold for everything. Just, that's that math doesn't add up. No, that's way too much. But he yeah. will gladly take it. I'll say, I will expedite <laughs> the process for you. Uh, I'll give him six gold for it. Okay. For it all. There we go. Yep. And he will. And he says, I will expedite the process. I appreciate that greatly. Okay. So, two gold for the chairs, five gold for his chair. You'll still owe him. Uh, one gold. All right. Uh, I'll give him that last gold whenever oh, okay. it's done. Yep. And delivered. Okay. So, uh, you guys, he points out the four chairs that you can take. You grab them. You head back to your uh, manor to put them in. Sketch, what are you doing? Uh, after I finish my drink, uh, I'm gonna head back. You know, I just realized I put the name "the dump" over our over our home. Yeah, I I noticed like, that j jokingly when we got here, and now it's even. Now I think I might just um. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um. Uh. So after I finish my drink, I'm gonna head back to Trollskull Manor. Alrighty. I'm gonna make this more reasonable. There we go. Still a dump, but hmm. <laughs> anyway, um yeah, I'll just head back to Trollskull Manor. There, you've got arrows pointing to it and everything. <laughs> Alright, so you guys make your way back to... Oh, I erased your text. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, I love it. I love it. Um, so you make your way back to Trollskull Manor. Um, as you enter, there are four chairs. Well, a total of five now. So, there would be no insurance, Balthazar. How much is our insurance? Would an insurance policy cost? You'd have to go to the insurance broker to find out. We have an insurance broker. I'm sure there's one somewhere. Waterdeep has everything. Yes. Uh, so when we uh, get the yeah, when I get there, I'm just gonna um. I'm just gonna head inside and have a sit on one of the new chairs. Okay. Um, it's not particularly comfortable, but it's very sturdy. It's very well made. Good craftsmanship. You can buy cu- cushions for it. Got lumbar support. Ugh. Sheev asks Sketch, how do you like the new chair? It's solid. I'll give you that. Exactly. Uh, we can we can have we can buy a pillow or something along the lines to sit on. I just felt like we had nowhere to go. We all just went to our rooms. We couldn't sit together and talk. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Of course, of course. Did your business at the Yawning Portal go well? Yeah, it went very well. Just gotta wait and see uh, how much it returns. Indeed. Well, I know about all I know about you, but I'm certainly excited to actually be sleeping in a bed tonight. Tonight? <laughs> I I will I thought it was uh two to three days. About this time there's a rap on the door. Hmm. I get up and I uh open the door. Um as you open the door you see um a few um, human looking people, uh, say, uh, got delivery for the, uh, Troskull Manor? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, please, come on in. I'll tell you which, uh, rooms to put them in. Okay. Uh, and I lead them to every room and I point out, uh, and I specifically point out, uh, Sheev's room and say, unfortunately, that room, uh, won't be getting a bed tonight. That's the later delivery. Very well. We understand, sir. Sorry. Uh, and they bring up the beds in pe- in parts, like the headboard, the sides, things like that. And they they assemble them in all the rooms. It takes about about an hour to assemble the four beds in the four different rooms. And they go, oh, so we're done and we'll be heading out. Uh, and they look at you and say, the last stuff should be here within the next couple of days, he said. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for choosing... Uh, Da, ba, 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 ba. Grismores. Yes. Thank, Grismore. thank you for tra- choosing Grismores beds for your bedding needs. Then they will leave. Did Sheev happen to see how the beds were put together? Um, I'll say yeah. You guys would have seen how the beds were put together. All right. Uh, is that are they held together by? Uh, pins or screws or something nope they are it's it's all carpentry there's no nails involved as far as like put, keeping the beds together um they kind of lock into place into s- different slots like in the headboards and whatnot interesting <laughs> can't heat metal now bitch <laughs> oh i don't have i i think i know where he's gonna be going with this <laughs> so yes four of the five bedrooms have beds if only I knew your spell list. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I could just ask Left to take care of it. <laughs> Maybe she would. Maybe she wouldn't. In fact, uh, Sheev 
I she while in his room says, "Left my dear, if you're there, I I'd, I'd like to play a joke on our friend Sketch." Hey, you don't know it was me. You were the only one that's talking to the carpenter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, you start to feel a a warm sensation. Yes. Um, I would like if. Are you able to make it so that the bed is starting to come apart? Just slightly push it so that whenever she lays down at night, um, the bed completely falls apart. Uh, You get no response. And then about five minutes later, you feel this warmth. Ah, that is perfect. My dear, you are oh, so wonderful. You're, you're one of the best friends a man could have. Uh, you feel another sensation of warmth, and then the sensation fades, and you get the feeling that Lif's not in the room anymore. Goodbye, Lif. Okay. What time of day is it? Uh, it's It's arriving nighttime at this point. Sketch is also shockingly light. <laughs> well, if it comes to it, I've got a spell or two that can take care of it. <laughs> Catapult the bed. Poo! Indeed. So. Catapult. Uh... <laughs> well, how much does Sketch weigh? Uh, <laughs> so Sketch weighs 80 pounds. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Like, yeah, Sketch is dangerously light. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I guess yeah. while we have a chance, um, or maybe I did this during the, um, uh, during the drink or whatever, I'm gonna attune to the, um, dagger. Yeah, that would be easy enough to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, when I get a second, I'll pop up the stat sheet on my laptop and pop it over to you. It's it's. I don't think it's a plus one dagger. I'm pretty sure it's just the 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 range on it. But yeah, just the, a regular dagger that has um ten you know, feet of reach, thing, which is very dangerous. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Um. As you guys begin your preparations to go to sleep for the night, uh, Sketch, you see on top of your fireplace, there is a wooden likeness of you in your changeling form um, with a piece of paper next to it. And it says, I can't pretend to understand what you have gone through, but if nature has taught me anything, it is that change is a gift. Use it to your advantage, but never forget who you are. Um, it also goes on to say that your secret is safe with us, and it's signed at the bottom with just a paw print. Fuck. <laughs> and that is where we're going to stop tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good, I liked that one. I, I quite liked the, today's uh, episode. Shit. Who knows? Who do I need to shank? <laughs> <laughs> who do? Who do I? Okay, now I might need the cleaners. <laughs> I'm not dirty though. <laughs> it ain't you. I'm getting dirt on you. Well, oh, if you can goddamn... find it. Poor printers from. <laughs> I love it, guys! Awesome episode. Thank you. Can you send yeah. me like what that uh, message was? Yes, can just... I can send it, everything to you. Yeah, because I need to. I'm gonna study that thing, and I'm gonna like make sure I know exactly. Like, I want. 
damn it, if only I got the, if only I went to see Alma later. <laughs> but Ooh, my spell save DC went up. Nice. Yeah, because, you up because you upped your charisma. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That is what it okay, says. I understand what you have gone through. See, that reminds me of what Alma said. But if nature has told me anything, it's the changes a gift. Use it to your advantage and never forget who you are. Your secret is safe with us. Signed with a paw print. It wouldn't be Kelleth. Kelleth would have said something. Alright. And I'm going to go ahead and catapult sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Does what's catapult's weight limit? Leak oh, it. It's, it's Leak ten minutes. Catapult. <laughs> it's ten minutes. I'm kidding, bud. Or ten minutes. It's ten pounds. Ten pounds. Ten yeah, pounds I figured. Off. Reduce. So yeah. Um. Reduce catapult enlarge. <laughs> um. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just need to think what could. Yeah, and that statue of what I look like. And no. it is really no. good. It is, um, you know how you paint? It's just as good, if not better, than some of your best works. It what is, it's a very beautiful, know. intricate, very real likeness in wood. How That's actually amazing. Know? I'm intrigued Shit. by this. Yeah, I, well, first of all, I'm hiding that. But I want to, like, destroy it. I'm going to put it, like, if we get a fireplace lit, I'm throwing uh, well, After checking if there are any secret compartments. You can't do that tonight. We'll do that. We'll worry about that next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> Damn. Hang on. I'm writing... Uh, hang on. Quick notes. Uh... See how he is? He just wants to throw the stuff I give him into a fireplace. Hey, at least I don't want to throw the rest of the party members in with the fishes. <laughs> you couldn't throw Alma. me. You're not strong enough. Yeah, he's got a point there. Al Alma might. <laughs> Al I don't know what level Alma is. I never discussed it with a DM. But Alma's my mentor. Imagine how high her sneak attack is. <laughs> okay, but can she jump ten feet up in the air? Uh, she can climb up walls, probably. Yeah, yeah, she oh. can. Assuming she's a assuming she's a high enough level monk. Spoiler alert: she's a badass. I don't know what level she is. That's com like that's completely up to the DM. But yeah, I'm assuming that she went a similar route of like, uh, monk and rogue. Definitely monk, but I'm just wondering like how deep she went.